Small all the time. Rolls to his right, looking for a receiver downfield, pumps it, now throws it just a little short. Had a receiver open, but the ball falls to the ground just a little short of the receiver, so it's going to be an incomplete pass, and it's going to bring up third down and 12 in a punting situation for Udawa. It's exactly what the Cherokees were looking for. That'll be a question I'll make sure we ask Coach Cagle is if, you know, they saw anything different in pregame and noticed that the starting quarterback – who we anticipated yeah. is not out there. And, and these, uh, I will tell you, these starting lineups came directly from their coach. Now, that's midweek. No, there's no doubt about that. He's, <laughs> they're not trying to sneak anything past us. It could have been something that happened just in the last day or so. So back to punt. A high snap is going to be taken by the punter. He's trying to run to his left. He's going to be taken down at the five-yard line. Everything working for the Cherokees here on homecoming to start out. So th this, uh, with the, the muffed snap, the Cherokees are going to take over at the Uldawa five-yard line. I got to feel the first and goal is the best the starting <laughs> position we've seen all year. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It goes officially as a turnover on downs. But the bad snap. It, it was just a high snap, and he, it, you know, he had a shot at it, but just couldn't control it. And the right. team, McMahon County in there pretty quickly. And they pursued it pretty quick. And we've got uniform. This was a uh, – people on social media saw this happen last week. TWSWA yeah. notified some people over the course of the week about uniform changes, and so – Cherokees have to run on two more players. Makai McDermott coming out. Who was the other? J.C. Genoa, Genoa Robinson. Genoa Robinson. And that's that's your center, folks. And and this is not a knock on these players. This this is how crazy this is. It's just an undershirt that's sticking out. Yeah. And it just seems like there's more important things to, to be taking a look at, doesn't yep. there? Well, here's the first run of the day for Jacob Sharp. We're going to get those players back into the game. Robinson and McDermott coming back in. And the first run, really, he fights to get back to the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard back to the six-yard line of Udawa. So it's going to be second and goal from the six-yard line. And Udawa's uh, nose tackle is hurt. He's going to hobble off the field there. So. And that's the that's that big guy that 58. Uh, Coach uh, Cagle was referring to during our Cherokee game day. He said they had a big guy that ran the nose guard. He is big, but he's limping off the field right now. This is not the start Ottawa wanted for sure. We're just underway. No score right now. Ten minutes, 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Brady Mullins brings his team to the line. It's going to be another handoff to Sharp, this time around the right side. And is he in? Yep. He makes in it. Into the end zone. Wasn't sure if he got pushed out there to one. But he goes down as a six-yard touchdown run for Jacob Sharp. And the keys are on the board really quickly. 10-24 to go here in the first quarter. And Sullins will be coming in for the point after. Couldn't couldn't ask for a better start there for the black and gold. Mm, absolutely. And I go back to when I was in school. Udawa was always that nemesis the football team couldn't beat. They had a lot of good programming oh, yeah. back then, so it feels good to be up on Udawa anytime you play them. Here's the snap. It's down. Kick is up quickly. And it is good. So, with 10.24 to go in the first quarter, McMinn County strikes first. It's 7 to nothing over Ottawa. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Did you know that All Things Exterior is your one-stop shop for energy-efficient metal roofing, vinyl siding, windows, doors, decking, gutters, and more? Basically, if it involves the exterior of your home, we can help. Hi, I'm Buffy Jones. Because we accomplish more together than we do alone. For more than a hundred years, 
Simmons has worked hard to help make customers' dreams come true, like buying a home, starting a business, or managing money safely and securely. Visit us today. Simmons Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Back at Cherokee Stadium, McMinn County leads Ottawa early. It's seven to nothing. Spencer Sullins is out to for his second kickoff of the night. Had the opening kickoff as well, and this one he's also going to put well into the end zone. And here comes. Do we know the dog? I will find out. We've got to find out. He's back out there picking up the kicking tee, and he's bringing. This is this is awesome. He's got a good grip on it now. Whoops! Keeps. Got a little turnover issue right now. He's going to have to hold on to it a little better. Unguarded, though, so at least he's recovering it. <laughs> Trying to and pad the stats. He's off the field. I love that. So, a week ago, Jared, uh, McMinn County comes out. They go on a 16-play drive that takes up uh, nine minutes and 19 seconds. Their first score tonight, two plays. <laughs> and Different game. Yeah. Quarterback for Ottawa rolls to his right. He's going to throw to his receiver. I think it's caught. He goes immediately down at the 25-yard line. That one, that's a tough throw as you're rolling out over there. Yep, just rolled to his right. I think you've got an early score of interest there. Uh, yeah, Bradley Central is trailing at home against Heritage out of Georgia, who comes in 3-1, and one, trailing 9 to nothing in the second quarter. I was looking at some early scores there. And here's a run up the middle. Not much there. Maybe he fought forward for a couple of yards. Thought they, thought they had him on the ground. I think he was laying on a player and then kind of stretched forward for another yard. So up to the Ottawa 27-yard line. And in the backfield for them, that's Kobe Baldwin. So you got Baldwin and Spears that are in the, in the backfield. Just wonder how much notification time Spears had during the week. How much has he worked at quarterback? Here's a handoff again and he's going to fight forward for the first down and that is again Baldwin. And there was a big hole that time. There definitely was compared to the first series. It was starting to click a little bit here. Up to the 33 yard line and the first first down of the night for Ottawa. They'll have it first down and 10 from the 33. Again, at halftime, Cherokee Chat, we're going to be joined by Shazan Bradley and Terry Moore. And they did such a great job for us in our pregame show, Cherokee Game Day. And so many stories and so many memories of uh, coaches and teachers. And, and uh, we'll have more of that at halftime. You'll want to stay with us. Here's a run up the middle again by Baldwin. And he's going to be taken down right at the line of scrimmage. We'll call it no gain at the 33-yard line. Everybody in region play tonight in our region so we'll yep. be watching those scores i was i was thinking how is it nine to nothing all right but they, they probably had that seven o'clock they started time, at seven yeah. o'clock yep yeah. so i think a lot of teams knoxville area they do start at seven um and i think a lot of them do it because when we get to playoff time twsaa makes everybody move it up to seven eastern so yeah might as well i guess their philosophy is do it that way during the regular season this year so so back in the backfield again and there's whistles before it snapped, and it looked like a false start on Ottawa is going to cost them five yards. So it's going to be second and 15. That will back it up to the 28-yard line. Again, Hudson Spears, the junior running quarterback for Ottawa. Is it Spears or Smallin? I'm, I'm sorry. You're, you're right. My, my bad. It is Brock Smallin. Thank you, Jared. I thought maybe they'd switched again, so I didn't know. I like they, to test you occasionally, make hey, sure you you're know, listening and, and watching. Okay. <laughs> well, and, you know, a false start like that, obviously it's on the offensive line or maybe one of the receivers on that one, but that that can be tricky, the timing there with the quarterback out this, of the shotgun. Yep, this time rolling oh. to his left. He completes the pass out on the far side of the field, but he's taken down immediately. I think that was Fagans out there on defense. And looks like we got a flag on the Cherokees. Mm, flag up there where I the quarterback it's... was hit. We had a Cherokee coming in really hard on him. They're going to call a personal yep. foul roughing the passer. So that's going to cost them 15 yards. That's a tough one right there. It was getting ready to be third and, and about 14, I think. Now, mm. it's let's see, is it an automatic 
first down, I think so. Should be. Yeah, it's up yep. to the 43-yard line, so it's going to be close anyway. So we're going to mark it on the 43, but the bad thing about that is it's first and 10 again. Yeah. That's... And they're almost up to midfield. This defense played one heck of a game a week ago. And I think they're probably pinning their ears back a little bit knowing that you've got a guy in there that probably wasn't expected to start and trying to get to him early and rattle him some more. That time they rolled him to the left, had to throw against his body. They're doing it again. Here comes Fagans. Fagans pops him again as he threw. No flag there. Yeah. It was close though, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I don't I don't know that that one was close. I was more ooh and on over the, <laughs> over the hit. hit. I mean, Landon probably didn't have to put that much effort into it, but the quarterback went flying. He hit him just as he was releasing. I didn't think it was a no. penalty, um, but you never know. He, he did put a, put a lick on it. He was in there quick, too. Yes. He, he was untouched for sure. So that incomplete pass is going to bring up second down and 10 from the 43. Smallin. Hands off this time up the middle. That's Baldwin again. He's going to get three, four yards. Henry Cook. He ran into Henry Cook there, and, but did pick up the positive yards on the fall forward. Yep, up to the 47-yard line to pick up a four yards. It's going to be third down and six. So a big third down, early third down. Obviously, they're going to roll Smallin out. Doesn't look like they're looking for him just to sit back in the pocket very much. And he's a, he's a quick, small kid. And, of course, he plays receiver, so you'd expect him to have some speed. He's looking over to the sideline right now, getting the play call. Play clock down to one now. I bet they, yep, yeah, they got the timeout in. Yep. Time was about to run out. So, with a timeout, 6.47 to go. McMinn leads Ottawa 7 to nothing. We'll take a 30-second break. Hello, this is Jeff Wolfenden with Madison Avenue Pharmacy. Here at your only locally owned Healthmark Pharmacy, we know that taking more than one medication can get confusing. So we offer special packaging to help organize your medications by day and time. This service can be life-changing for patients and caregivers of patients taking several medications throughout the day. We also offer free local prescription delivery. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, 1001 West Madison Avenue, Athens, Healthmark, taking the time to listen and care. Back at Cherokee Stadium, uh, uh, Jared, again, uh, talking about a pregame show for a second. Nice to be in to the Performance Center tonight. Yeah. They're inching closer, uh, getting the flooring down. We could we could see that in there. And they've gotten the okay to be in the building, so it's really now getting close yeah. to getting those weights the in. The flooring there. looked awesome. they got the lights on over there right now, and um, it's pretty yeah. impressive. Um, you start to see it take shape. Oh. Here's the snap that goes through the quarterback's hands, and he does recover the fumble. Rouse was in there quickly. That one probably he could have come down with, but it goes right through his hands. It was a little high, but it's going to be a big loss. Back to the 34-yard line. That's a loss of 13 yards on the play, and it brings up fourth and long. They've got to go all the way to the 47 of McMahon, but they're going to punt again. Remember the last time they attempted to punt, the center, the snap rather, sailed over the punter's head. Let's see what we got this time. It's a good snap. Ooh. McMinn County was in there. Was that Rouse in there? Yep. Ball bounces. Dakota Thompson back. Now he's going to back away from it. The ball rolls inside the 25-yard line to about the 21 or 22. That's not Actually, a bad punt. No, it wasn't. It's going to be at the McMinn County 21-yard line, and that's where they're going to take over. Remember, their first drive started – but at the Ottawa five-yard line. So a good job by the defense stiffening there, although Ottawa's not doing themselves any favors. Definitely not. Some bad snaps here early. A couple of times they've been able, Ottawa's been able to stay with it, but then that time, uh, time right before the punt, yep. quarterback just couldn't do anything smartly, dives on it because McMahon was bearing down to try to get it. Here is a, well, it's a quarterback keeper. And Mullins was hit right at the line of scrimmage. He fights back to the line of scrimmage. He pulled that one back, but they looked like they had everything covered that time. Yeah, I think they were. They kind of had that read, and um, 
I, they really had Sharp covered, as you were talking about. I had everything covered. Sharp was kind of the guy he was faking the handoff to. Yeah. And they had him marked up. They had Brady just covered as well. So, good to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there. just a good defensive play there by Ottawa is all you can say. 5.25 to go in the first quarter. McMinn ahead. And here's a handoff to Tarzan White up the middle. He makes a nice little stutter step move to find some running room. There really wasn't much there. And he's going to be up to the 29-yard line. It's a gain of eight. I'm telling you, that offensive line getting some push. That 58 is back out there for Ottawa. And that is Naaman Daring. My goodness, he's a big kid. Well, if Shajan Bradley thought he was a big kid, then, yeah, yeah that should tell you all you need to know. If Shajan was impressed by him, there you go. Janora Robinson kind of being tasked with blocking him in some situations. McDermott goes in motion, sets up on the left side. Here's the handoff to Jacob Sharp around the end. He's got some running room up over the 40. There's a flag down. He's pushed out of bounds near midfield, but a late flag comes in. I think it's going to be holding or a block in the back. So this one's probably coming back. Unfortunately, I think they're going to get one of the wideouts. A little clarification on the holding uh, this week. Holding that's behind the line of scrimmage is marked off from the line of scrimmage. Okay. Holding on the other side is marked from the spot of the foul. Does well, there make, we go. That makes a little more sense. Yeah, it? now it does. The way the way we've seen some of the math done on some of the yards, it makes a lot more sense. This one is going to be marked off from the spot, I believe. So it's going to take it back to the 27-yard line. And that's going to be bring up about a third and a long four. Which essentially is a loss of two on the play. Yeah. Um, third and four. Exactly. Third down and four. That's the key is like sometimes you can uh, listen, uh, Dakota have Thompson a huge, downhill. Uh, huge uh, block after getting the holding call there. He comes back and gets a good block on the outside. Going for two, Terry. And uh, there's a penalty down. Penalty flag down. It looks like they got the two-point conversion, but we'll wait for the call. Probably a false start. Was what? It delay How a game? Was it? How did he signal block in the back? Yep, they're going to set back up. They'll, they'll uh, march off the penalty. Was it a block in the back? That's the signal he kind of gave the okay. block in the back, gotcha. but I, there wasn't anybody to really block in the back, so I'm confused on that one. <laughs> I'll well, check the footage here. In they're a gonna, they're gonna, yeah. There you go. They're gonna step it back. He's now kicking from the 15. I guess they're gonna take that on the kickoff. Maybe. Here's the extra point. A traditional extra point is up and it's good. So, 4:07 to go here in the first quarter. McMean County stretches the lead to 14 to nothing over Ottawa. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Companion Funeral Home of Athens has served thousands of families in McMinn and surrounding counties since opening their doors in 2017. The same family you've trusted to serve your family now brings you Hawassi Memorial Gardens, offering traditional cemetery plots in both in-ground and above-ground cremation burial options. This affordable and well-maintained cemetery and their caring staff will treat your family with dignity, compassion, and respect as they help create a beautiful final resting place for your loved ones. Plots are selling now. Learn more at Hawassi HawasseeMemorialGardens.com Hey, do you look around your home and think, man, it needs some help? Hawassee Builder Supply has what you need. Serving East Tennessee since 1958, we can handle projects big and small. Whether it's a kitchen remodel, replacing doors or windows, or a new roof, or a new build from the ground up, we got the supplies. Contact us today, 423-745-4704, or visit us online at Hawasi.com. Our team can help you accomplish your remodel or building dreams. We are proud to support McMinn County Athletics. Back at Cherokee Stadium, McMinn County leads Ottawa 14 to nothing midway through the first quarter. Jared, I kind of been waiting for Tarzan White to break a big run, and and there it, there it was. And of course, he had like you stated there a great downfield block from Thompson. He did, and I think it's kind of been. We, we saw flashes a couple of years ago from Tarzan, and I, it, he's had the itch. You know it's going to happen. When can he finally get the room? And he did right there and broke off an outstanding run um, and had Udawa guys chasing him down and still kept the distance between them right there. Good outstanding run to close it out for the touchdown. So it looks like they did mark off a five-yard penalty on the extra point. The extra point was still – it was kicked from the 15. It was good. 
We kicked off just now from the 40, but also had a false start or an offside, yeah, something yeah. there on the kicking team. So we're re-kicking. Ball set now at the 35-yard line. Sullins still has a shot to put this one in the end zone. And here's the kick. And this one's going to be returnable. He catches it at the four-yard line up over the 15 to the 20. Finds running room to the outside. He's over the 30. He's going to be taken down before he gets to the 35-yard line. They're going to have good field position. Caden Melton saving that one from breaking up out further. And you see the penalties right there just kind of backed you up a little bit. And Oop, just a couple here, yards here shy. Here comes the dog. Still, I'll get an update at some point. We'll get the dog's name. Not uh, see if you can check that replay on that extra point. I don't know. That's I'd what like I'm see trying what to see. I can't see the, they, what the penalty was. I so guess. the coaching staff and their or team that handles the video, they finally hooked us up and let us – tap into their replay abilities up here in the booth, so I'm going to take the benefit of that on any questions we have now. Udawa around the left side. That's a new back in the game. We'll check it's out who be that is. Jadarius Strickland on the run for Strickland, the Strickland, and they start at the 33-yard line. He's going to be up over the 35, maybe to the 39-yard line, we'll call it. So a pickup of six yards on first down, second down, and four. And it looks like they're going to leave Strickland number 31 in there in the ball game. So we've seen Baldwin for their first couple of series. Again, it's Brock Smallin in at quarterback. He was a late replacement for Ottawa. Smallin is a junior, so he's been around a little. Here's the snap. He's going to roll to his right. They're not. They're certainly. They're, they certainly have enough confidence in him. They're going to yep. let him throw the football. And he picks up the first down there. That one uh, completed to Josh Davis on the near side of the field. And as you said, it's enough for the first down up to the 45-yard line. You wonder if they're, if the Cherokees are, you know, letting them again have some of that short stuff. We saw that a week ago uh, with Oak Ridge. I mean, they completed a lot of passes but uh, kept everything in front of them. Here's a high snap again. He's going to miss the handoff. It's a broken play that the quarterback's going to try to get what he can, and he picks up two or three yards. I saw Coach Brad Bennett throw his hands up right there on the – I think maybe the defensive line just didn't have their eyes forward on it and see the bad snap and wanting a little bit quicker pressure. Yep. Because he did get some positive yards yeah, out of that. picks up three to the 48. It's second down and seven. Notice Cayman Brown kind of inching forward out of, out of that. I think that's Cayman out of the safety position. Yep. He's almost in that line. Here comes Landon Fagans. And, oh, my goodness, he almost had him. The quarterback, I guess, gets rid of it for an incomplete pass. But Fagans was all over him really quickly. Then he got some help. He spun him around. I thought he was going to go down, but somehow he kept his balance. He did, and Coach Cagle, I think, has an argument there for intentional grounding because the only people in the play were offensive linemen was, who were ineligible. And it was offensive linemen who actually kind of made a dive at the ball. Yeah, so thought Henry Cook was about <clears> to get himself an interception, but – uh, just couldn't get to it, but I mean, defense had him wrapped up there. Yep, there I, we go. I think it's an illegal touch if he if he touches the ball. Let's see. So that, I guess they talked about it, and it is going to be intentional grounding. So he's, he's good good uh, call right there. You get lucky Jared. every now and then. Yep. <laughs> so they're gonna we'll see where they mark this one off. They're gonna start at the line of scrimmage, of course. But almost kind of became one of those you think of the NFL and the Brady Tuck rule I didn't know if it was a fumble yeah. if it was a pass because he had three defenders that had him wrapped up so they're going to call that that's five yards from the spot of the flag it looked like because they he went to the flag and stepped it off yep about what maybe a, yeah I guess 11 yards from the so it's still going to be third down and the ball is all the way back to the 34-yard line. Yeah, because the intentional ground, they lose the loss of down, so that's why it's not a replay of second, which helps McMahon in that category. So Smallin 
Back at quarterback, gets a man coming in motion. They're confused. Oh, false start. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's one of those where the uh, um, the entire side is going to get called for yep. that one. The right side. Had Got a good, an update. Good three or four players, yeah. The dog's name is Dandy. So Dandy, Dandy, okay. the retrieving dog there. Dandy. Well, he's doing a dandy job, yep. I can tell you that. So far, so good. Shout out to athletic director Jake Roberts' his wife, Shelby, who I went to school with here at McMinn County High School, providing that information for us. Love and that. I mean, you're, you keep – if you're Udawa right here, the snaps have been kind of bad. <clears throat> it's third and 25 Third and now. 25, yep. You're just trying to pick up some positive yards so that you don't put your defense in a bad field position. Yep. That time they just went on a quick snap. It's a jailbreak coming back to the quarterback. He's going to complete – he completes the pass, but it's going to be obviously well, well short of the first down. Gets up to about the 33-yard line, I think. It's, I think Sharp was on the tackle yep, over there on the Jacob far side. Sharp hit him pretty quickly. They're going to mark it at the 34, I guess. Four, we'll yeah. call it. Let's call it the 34. Brings up fourth down. So it's fourth and long, and here, here we go again with a punting situation for Ottawa. And they're struggling, Jared. I mean, you can you can see that, and some of that is you know bringing in a new quarterback. Yeah, it uh, definitely if, is. If he if something happened to where they just had to replace him this week, that that can cause some havoc for you. Here's a kick. It's an end over end kick that's going to bounce, and Dakota Thompson's going to take it at the 35 yard line, trying Ooh. to find the edge, can't find it. Nice tackle right there. And we're going to get a little uh, marquee crutcher. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on McMahon, and now we got some extracurriculars. And now we've got a lot of extracurricular. And I'm trying to get some players back onto the sideline. Well, that looked like something had been brewing or something, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean. I mean, that was out of nowhere. I mean, it's 14 to nothing. Not much is going on. Flashback to the Bradley game there a little bit, but. We'll see what they sort out on this one. Well, I, I hope there's no ejections. There, there was some pushing. I don't know that I necessarily yeah, I seen a punch. Yeah, I saw a lot of shoving. And when some of these guys shove it, it sends you back pretty far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. On both sides of the field there. After the return, the ball is marked right now at the 37-yard line. Well, it's getting ready to write down the – at least the first one I know is going to be on McMahon for unsportsmanlike conduct. But and this was all after the play, so yes. there's, I don't think there's any issue about yeah, it'll still giving, be McMahon's yeah, ball. Giving yeah, giving Udawa a first down or anything like that. It's just a matter of where this ball is going to end up being set. Fourteen to nothing, McMahon over Udawa. Two minutes and three seconds. You know, a week ago, I guess it was a week ago, right? Udawa lost to Walker Valley 35 to nothing. Is that right, Jared? I believe that's right. And, um, okay, here's the call. Sport, unsportsmanlike on Udawa. I think we got another one. That's and an, an ejection. ejection. Unsportsmanlike. Another one on Udawa. Unsportsmanlike. Wow. Okay, I know the first flag was supposed to, one of them was supposed to have been called on McMinn. <laughs> That's on the 40-yard line. Yeah, yeah. And I think now they're talking about that one. So at least one person from Udawa has been ejected. Don't, yeah, one. But I don't – and credit to the rest for trying to sort this out. I mean, it's there's no replay that they can go to to help them kind of figure yeah. this out. Yeah. So They've got to go with exactly what they think they saw right, right in the moment. And during that moment, <laughs> they're also trying to break things up. Yes. So, you know, it's, yes. it's a – it's a tough job for the officials when, when those things break out. Got to keep her cool right here, though. Up 14 to nothing. And there's always the plug. They always need more officials and trying to train yeah. the next group of them coming up. So, Well, that's a good point. The that's, officials are meeting at midfield if you're joining us by radio tonight. Uh, they're still meeting. They're still talking this over. The situation is it's going to be McMinn County's football. There's two minutes and three seconds to go. McMinn leading Ottawa. What I was getting at, if they lost big a week ago, I think yeah. my understanding it was 13 to 35 to nothing, and that was really at half. Yeah. Um, yes, okay. They yeah. had the now lights, I remember. The lights yep. uh, went out. The power was went out. 35 to nothing, and they were at Ottawa, 
and I was reading an article about that this week, and um, they it was their homecoming, and the lights went out. They tried to work to get it restored, and they couldn't. So then the Corvette Club they had down there lit up the field with the headlights for the homecoming court, but they called the game 35 to nothing. So there's the unsportsmanlike on both teams. Okay. Those offset. Then another unsportsmanlike on Udawa. Two on Udawa. And I think, I think there's three. Not, I think he might have. So it might be two on the same player. Yeah. Now Coach Cagle's getting he, an explanation. He held up the num he held up two, and I don't know if that meant two for the same unsportsman light, uh, or unless he meant number two. But I I don't know be. that uh, we'll, we'll we'll find out really quickly because if if it is two, that's Baldwin, their running back, starting running back. But they Coach. are going to walk off about thirty yards of penalties right here. Is what's going to happen? It's going to give McMahon good starting position again. Look at that. Still going inside the 45, inside the 40. I feel like I ought to be calling it for the ref <laughs> running down the field. All the way down. Good right. ball movement by the ref right there. <laughs> it was. Picked up a block on this short side of the field. All the way down to the Udawa 33-yard line. Wow. Which is where Udawa started that last drive. That's where they started their possession. Unbelievable. So, okay, Terry Stancil sounds like he's getting the recap. He'll have that for us at halftime because uh, it, good luck to him marking off all that. But, yeah, 30 well, yards of kidding. penalties right there because two of them offset. And then so, Udwa had, I guess, a total of three. My goodness. And there's still a little bit of talking going on between the lines. Well, they're trying to explain that to Coach Manning, Udwa's coach on the other side, and I'm sure he's – Feels like uh, they might have got shorted on that a little bit because there was so much pushing going on. Going on. Yep. And I'm not sure they're gonna might bring this back. Fifteen. Oh no, they're going another one. My goodness, you gotta be kidding. Them. Now that one, I, ooh. so that must mean there's four. This ball is inside the 20 yard line. My goodness, we were we were at the 32 yard line of McMinn. And with penalties, this has went all the way to the 18 it appears. I don't I don't I find that hard to believe that's right. So that means they had 3 plus the offsetting ones. Cuz which man got one nothing. yeah. So a little bit of confusion here, maybe still. McMahon's going to huddle up at least. Yeah, as they should. We need to get this game going too. The ball's marked at the Ottawa 18-yard line. And, and the officials have to... having to go back and forth between the two sidelines to explain everything. Now the Cherokees come to the line of scrimmage. Again, Coach Manning for Ottawa back onto the field. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to talk with him just a little bit and, and really seems like a class guy. And he, he's, he's being yeah. classy right this second. He's not hardly even arguing. I think he's just looking for an explanation. Back to pass is Brady Mullins looking to the, to the corner of the end zone. It's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Faulkner. There was good coverage back there. Davis. Uh, Josh Davis on yep, coverage. He was covering it on Ethan Faulkner and, I mean, went up with him. He wasn't. It didn't look like it was going to be a – play that the defender could make and comes back to the ball after they both turn around and kind of look at it on the high point. And Ethan Faulkner can go up and get some passes. Yes. He got met up top there by Davis. On we that found one. that out. Yeah, last week. Yeah, a week ago. Oak Ridge upended him on one of them. Actually, I guess the week before at East Hamilton caught a couple yes. of nice uh, passes. Here's Tarzan White taking the carry up to about the 15, we'll call it the 14-yard line, picks up four. Looks like Tarzan White set to have a big night tonight, already has with the 73-yard touchdown run. So that's going to bring up third down, a long six. 
They're going to have to make their way to about the eight-yard line. McDermott in the backfield. Tarzan White, now Luke Sliger. And they're going to hand it to Sliger around the left end. Gets a block, tries to turn it up, but can't hardly stay in bounds, I don't believe, to get to the first down marker. He's at the 10-yard line. And I think you might see the Cherokees go for this, and it's going to be fourth down and two. And yeah, they're marked right on the 10, so. Fagans and Rouse come into the game, so they're bringing in more of a heavy top package. Might be Sliger again getting the call here. Sharp is in there as well, though. Might let Fagans and Sliger lead him around the end or something. Nope. It's just Sliger in the backfield. And they hand off to Sharp going around wow. the end. Needs a block. Getting it. I know. Oh, man. They're going to call a hold on the far side of the field. Looked like a good block from our vantage point. He held the block a long time. Now, granted, it's on the far side of the field right. from us. But he, and here's he another flag. Oh, my goodness. Well, Sharp went into the end zone for the touchdown. However, there was flags down that appeared to be a holding call. Then we had another later flag come in, holding on, and then an unsportsmanlike on McMinn County as well. So now we're going the other way, yep. Jared. It's not a good, <laughs> not a good change of scenery there, and especially when you're going for it on fourth and short, and you could it would have easily had the first down. Yeah, could have gotten it easily, and and that play just developed along the outside and. Well, now that's going to bring on the field goal unit. Spencer Sullen's going to be coming into the game. However, I don't know exactly where he's going to be kicking from just yet. They haven't marked it off. The officials, once again, well, they're uh, they're working hard out there. So I'll just oh, put yeah, it that way. They're working hard. And they write down everything they put in. Really, they kind of write it down, so... They might need a couple of pages of notebooks now. Yeah. So, let's see. It's going to – I mean, this went from a – It's going to be a long field goal now. The ball's going to be stepped off back to about the 28-yard line, let's call it, of Uldawa. So, he's going to be attempting from the 35-yard line. That's where they're going to tee it up at. And it's going to be a 45-yard field goal attempt by Sullins. The whistle blows. Waiting for the snap. Thompson has it. It's down. Here's the kick. He's got a lot of leg. Left. But it's going to go off to the left, and it's no good. So that kind of went south for the Cherokees. Yeah, definitely not the way. I mean, it's still the first quarter now. Yeah. But as much time as it's taken off to kind of run all those penalties back and forth, it didn't take the game clock down. But, I mean, that that series is disappointing after you yeah. you get the ball back and make a push after some uh, unsportsmanlike conduct on the other team and you get down there and can't put it in. We're going to keep it right here because there are only 54 seconds to go here in the first quarter. We'll be taking a break at the end of the quarter. Nonetheless, McMinn County still leads 14 to nothing over Ottawa. But it's been a little bit of a messy game. And, I, you know, this is a long time. They've played this game a lot, but I, I wouldn't consider it a rivalry game. And, right. and the way it's getting yep. chippy, it almost feels like a, a lot of tension there as a rivalry. Here's a carry to the left side. And it's going to be uh, Strickland again in yep. 31. It's a Darius Strickland. And he fights to get back to the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure he got any more than that. Rouse and Montgomery co yep. connecting on that tackle. Right at the 20, so no gain. Second down and 10. And the ball on that missed field goal gets moved back to the 20, even though the kick was from closer to midfield. They Yes, by rule, they move it back to the 20. Good point. A little different in high school yep. football. They are going to have to get a playoff here. Play clock is down to five seconds. Here's a snap. Going to roll to his right. 
Looking for a receiver. Looking now, getting some pressure. Gets rid of it. Oh and my! It, did he catch it? Well, it. I don't know if he caught. Well, yep, he yep, called it. Call plus it the roughing the passer. Another roughing oh. the passer. Wow. Well, we'll keep it right here. Time has ran out in the first quarter. We're going to sort this penalty out. They're going to have to mark things off and then move to the other side of the football field. The pass is complete for a first down. And it they're looking to the McMahon sideline. So. Uh oh, they were getting the clarification that it was complete. So it was at the 33-yard line. There, it was a penalty roughing the passer again. So they're going to take it up 15 yards. Well, up to the 49-yard line. That's going to do it for the quarter. It's McMinn County 14, Ottawa. Nothing will be back in 60 seconds. l and Motors, your local Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealer, is a proud supporter of McMinn County Cherokee Athletics. Brothers Leon and Marvin Hammond founded l and Motors back in 1966, and under Kevin Hammond's direction, it's still going strong at 1001 South White Street in Athens. Go see Kevin and the crew at l and Motors for all your Chrysler Dodge Ram and Jeep needs. l and Motors says, go try! Tennessee Wesleyan University offers more than 80 majors and minors at the undergraduate and graduate level. With the TWU Pledge, students may be eligible to attend tuition-free. A 10 to 1 student. All four years, scored 1,473 points, played at the University of Tennessee, averaged 11 points per game, and has played in Europe and in the NBA G League for the past 11 years now, an assistant coach at Knox Catholic, Jawan Smith. From the class of 1988, a basketball player for the Lady Cherokees, her junior year, she averaged 15.4 points per game. Senior year averaged 23.4 points per game. She was named All-State by the Chattanooga News Free Press and by the Knoxville News Sentinel. Played one year of college basketball at Clemson University. Finished her career for the last three years at Tennessee Wesleyan where she averaged 18 points per game. Renee Bowman Queen. From the class of 1986, a football player who didn't have a lot of accolades in high school, but once he went to college, he was at the Southern, U Southern Utah State football team. He was first team All-America in 1989-1990. He was the conference most outstanding offensive player in 1989. He was nominated for the Harlan Hill Award in 1990, which goes to the United States best small college football player, college football player. Started every game, played every offensive snap for four years in college, signed with the Dallas Cowboys as an unrestricted free agent, played for a year. He was in the Utah State Football Hall of Fame. Unable to be here, he lives in Oregon now. His sister, his sister Karen Bostick Ramsey, accepting for Randy Bostick. From the class of 1997, football player, all state, honorable mission for two years, but in baseball, all district, all region, all area, for two years, went to Carson Newman, where he was first team All-America in 2002, NCAA Division II, ABCA National Position Player of the Year, NCAA Division II Rawlings National Player of the Year. He led the nation in NCAA Division II in home runs and RBIs, he, was a, he holds the Carson Newman single season records in hits, RBIs, total bases, and at bats, and participated in the NCAA Division I College World Series Home Run Challenge in Omaha, Nebraska. From the class of 97, Heath Mason. And our final inductee from the class of 2013, from 2010 to 2013, she lettered in cross country, track, basketball and soccer. She was the Gatorade Tennessee Cross Country Runner of the Year. She was the 
TSSAA 3A cross country state champion as a junior, 3200 meter state champion as a junior, 1600 meter state runner up as a junior. She sets school records in the mile, the 3200 and the 5000, and she was the team MVP cross country all four years. In soccer, she set the school record for goals, which was just broken a couple of years ago. She was all district and all region for four years. In basketball, she scored 1,000 points. She was all district and all region. She was offered JUCO and NAIA offers in basketball, recruited by the University of Florida and Samford for soccer, signed with the University of Mississippi as a track scholarship. She ran there for three years, had a red shirt year, and finished up at Samford where she got her masters and she ran track and cross country there. Hall of Fame inductee Haley Ward Young. I don't mean to laugh against you, I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know and also earlier today, a couple of student athletes were recognized. Spencer Sullins of the McMinn County High School football team and Aubrey Gonzalez of the McMinn County tennis and basketball team. Congratulations to them all. with us yeah. and uh, uh, because it's we'll coming around the corner point. isn't it it is and it's it's hard to believe when you go to basketball season it, I go multi nights a week versus football it's only one night a week <laughs> I, I, so it kind of gets me into the season for basketball but yep. yeah we'll, we'll chat him up at some point I told him I texted him and said we'll We'll chat at some point before season starts. So he likes to travel to some road games. Might maybe, be able to catch him at one of those, maybe too. Maybe we can catch him. Here is a handoff oh. around the left side. Sharp comes up and makes a tackle at the knees, takes his feet out from under him. And another flag down. Okay, this one's right at midfield. And that was C.J. Carter, who is a holder and defensive lineman on their roster. Uh, exactly look like Taking that one. Well, you know what? I think Coach, um, I think Coach Cagle did actually mention to me that we might see him in the backfield some. So Good. that 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 makes sense now. It's a hold call on Ottawa. Well, I don't know. With the loss, do you take that penalty or just take the down? I think you just. Well, I mean, I'm trying to see where the yeah, ball. Now, ended. Yeah, yeah, they're going to decline it. Yeah, because yeah, it was a pretty good loss on the play. Back to the. Ottawa 43 yard line, so it's a loss of six yards. Felt worse than that, actually. But nonetheless, it's going to bring up second down and 16, so they lose the down. And he took the direct snap on that, by the way. Just kind of yep. looking back right there. He took the direct snap in the backfield and faked the handoff to take that one. So back in the backfield now is Strickland, is your running back, and they're going to roll to the right. Strickland is in there just to block and give some help there. Now he throws late. Ball is intercepted. intercepted. It's Dakota Thompson again. He stepped right go. in front of the receiver, just waited for that ball to come to him. And it's an interception. And McMinn County is going to go back on offense at their own 49-yard line. Outstanding play by Dakota Thompson. Try to just be right there with the receiver and take it away from him and did a beautiful job of keeping his hands on it because he got bumped. Yeah, there was a lot of traffic. Yep. And I thought the ball was going to kind of get bounced up into the air or something, but it looked like, boy, he had that one red completely and just waited for the right opportunity to get in front of the, of the uh, intended receiver. So the ball is at the 49-yard line. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Cherokees. 11.28 to go. This game's not moving rapidly. 11.28 to go. McMahon leads it 14 to nothing. It's definitely outside of that first, I guess, two series. It is very slow at the moment on the way this is going. A lot of flags, of course, and a, yep. lot, of, a lot of walking penalty yards off. And here is a handoff to Sliger around the right end. He needs a block, and... Tarzan White gave it, gave it to him, got him some extra yards. Slager carries, goes out of bounds. And he's going to be inside the 50 to about the 46-yard line of Ottawa. This, again, this drive started on the 49, so that's going to be a pickup of about five yards. Second, and Second five down and five. Dakota Thompson has a has – getting a real knack for interceptions. I think that's his third interception of the year. 
Well, that one, he, the ball kind of drifted off of the hand of the quarterback to the midfield. Usually it drift kind of out of bounds, but it kind of hooked at least from where the receiver was trying to get it. Here's, Here's a, Faulkner on a little screen. Yeah, a little quick Just pass. Get There's the first a down. shove out of bounds, and that's going to cost him 15. And now here is a, well, they're shoving again. So we got players that are pushing back and forth. The first one I know is on Ottawa. It was a tackle out of bounds. It was going to be a first down without question. All this is going to be after the play. The ball, the pass is going to get up to the 30. Is it 37? Oh, yeah. Standing on the 38. Yeah, yep. 38. Personal foul gets out. There was another flag I thought came by, but I guess they're going to say both those flags were on the same shove. I thought McMahon was going to get one as well. Well, nonetheless, it's going to take the ball all the way to the 23-yard line with the 15-yard penalty where it's going to be first and 10 for the Cherokees. Cherokees will have it first and 10. So it was a nice first down pickup of eight yards and then to get some more added on. Here's Tarzan White looking for running room. He finds it. Ronald breaks a tackle at the 15. He's going to wow. shoot straight into the end zone. Careful of the taunting when he gets in there. He's in. It's a yep. touchdown, Cherokees, with 11.09 to go. It's a 23 yard touchdown run for Tarzan White. He's going to be a little over 100 yards here in this first half. And we're actually. We're just barely getting started <laughs> yeah, I was in the say, second quarter. We still got a lot of time left. And here's a whistle timeout, Uldawa. They're calling their team to the sideline. We're going to go ahead and uh, with 11:09, we're going to go ahead and take a 30 second break. 30 second break. McMinn County 20, Uldawa zero. Athens Insurance, we're here for you. When you call, we'll be there. There's nothing that we can't do. With integrity and excellence, we will see you through. There's nothing to harbor us to handle. Nothing that we can't do. At Athens and Shore, we'll be here for you. Athens Insurance, serving East Tennessee since 1931. Back at Cherokee Stadium, McMinn County has just scored on a 23-yard touchdown run by Tarzan White. That's his second touchdown of the night. His first one covered 73 yards. There's 11.09 to go here in the second quarter. And the McMinn County Cherokees coming on for the point after. Udawa called a timeout. And uh, they're just struggling, Jared. This, are, this Udawa yeah. team just, just looks young, and they just look like they're struggling. Dakota Thompson in to hold. Here's the snap. It's put down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So that's going to push the score. McMinn County 21. Ottawa nothing. We'll take another break. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Hey, sports fans. This is United Primary Care, your locally owned full-service medical clinic. We have some awesome news for you. We are now accepting 10 care patients at all three of our clinics. Walk-in and same-day appointments are now available in Madisonville, Etowah, and Athens. UPC provides all your health care needs, including x-rays, labs, diabetic management, physicals, and so much more. We're on Facebook or UnitedPrimaryCareTN.com. When you think health care, thank UPC. Getting a good night's sleep is essential to your quality of life. So your mattress is one of the most important purchases you'll ever make. When it comes to comfort, one size doesn't fit all. The friendly staff at Plaza Electronics can help you find the right fit with brands like Tempur-Pedic, Serta, iComfort, and Beautyrest. They also have lift beds and lift chairs, offering free delivery and setup, 12 months, same as cash. Proudly serving this area for over 32 years, Plaza Electronics and Appliances. Visit them at their new location in the former home of Staples at 1609 Congress Parkway, South Athens. Back at Cherokee Stadium, 11 minutes and 9 seconds to go in the second quarter. We're really just getting started. But it's McMinn County 21, Ottawa nothing. And Sullins is set to kick off. Jared, we may take a look at a few scores uh, after this kickoff. Here's the kick. It's going to go well into the end zone, about halfway back. So, Ottawa is going to take over again, and they're going to take over at their own 20-yard line to start this drive. Uh, 
Any updates on around the region yet? Uh, let's see, around the region. I'm trying to check. Nothing currently being posted. Well, Ray County and Walker Valley is at half. It was all at the bottom. Mustangs up 28 to 12 over Ray County at home right now at the half. Um, and Howard and um, East Hamilton, we probably won't get a score from that for later on. So Udawa comes to the line. Again, their quarterback is Smallin, and he is going to hand off, and I think that's Strickland again, over the left tackle. He may have picked up a yard on the play. Up to the 21-yard line. It's going to bring up second down and nine. If you're just joining us. McMinn County 21, Udawa nothing. And it could be a lot more than that. It's just been a kind of a weird It's got a weird feel to this one tonight, I, yeah. I guess, a little bit. But, uh, you know, you, you have a team in Udawa that, that we got a lot of football to play. I'm not making definitive statements, but you can see that they're struggling a little bit. They got a replacement quarterback in there. Here's a pass to the right side that is going to be complete. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. But it, it is easy to play up or down to your competition sometimes. And you feel like uh, in some in some areas, McMinn's been a little bit sloppy tonight, and they've played down, but nonetheless, they're up 21 to nothing. Whereas a week ago, playing Oak Ridge, they were almost on top of every aspect of their game. Well, and you, you come off a big win beating the, the number five team in the state. That's where Oak Ridge was ranked in terms of the the class 5A. And so come off of that high, and now you got to get back into the game, and it's just been a slow, Fagans slow Fagans comes through like a rocket, but the quarterback turns back against the green, and he's going to have a – he reversed field on Fagans and luckily got away from him without a big impact. And he runs uh, and gets the first down just over the 30, just enough for the first down to the, we'll call it the 31. He's just inched over. Yeah, let's call it the 30. He's right at it. Yeah, that's uh, kind of showing some speed. You kind of expect that as a wide receiver. Yeah. He's coming out of there flying and picks up a big first down for not, him. Not that rankings mean a whole lot, but interesting that we beat Oak Ridge. And we received some votes for that's the it. top that's 10. It. No, and Oak Ridge else. stays in the top 10. Yep. I think at number eight, I think they slid down to number eight or nine. And here is wow. the runner that swarmed. I'm that counting them. Ten, let's see, nine Cherokees on the tackle. I'm not yeah. kidding you. Those who are watching it on YouTube, <laughs> the only two that Cherokees. weren't were the two backside secondary yeah. guys. So <laughs> A corner and a safety on yeah. the opposite side of the field. Everybody else on the tackle. He loses a yard back to the 29-yard line. Also interesting, uh, you know, Cherokee's two losses early in the season. Bradley Central now ranked number one in the state of Tennessee in Class 6A. And Cleveland, the other loss, ranked, I think, number eight this week in Class 6A. So, and those two teams will have to meet later on at some point. They will. Here's another pass that's going to be picked off. This time it's Sliger on the far end of the field, and he knows what to do with it. Wow. It took a lot to get him down. It took one of their big linemen that pounded him down, but nonetheless, a nice pickoff there by Sliger for the second interception of the game, and he runs it back to the Udawa 36-yard line. Almost looked like Sliger was trying to throw a block for himself on one of the guys. <laughs> he was kind of shoving him, and then a big offensive lineman comes in and Nails him, but Luke Sliger, he's been impressing me a lot playing, uh, showing the offensive side of the ball. We've seen him play really yep. well defensively the last couple of years, and um, he's impressed me with his speed and his hands on the offensive side of the ball. McMinn takes over, 9-14 to go here in the second quarter. They lead 21 to nothing. Now they have take over after the Sliger interception. You know, and, and, and talking about Sliger, especially on offense, you get a dose of, of uh, Jacob Sharp and uh, Tarzan White, and, you you know, those guys quick, yes. uh, smaller body types, and then 44 comes running at you. And it's a <laughs> different game when that happens. He is it, it, watching football in the 90s. He is – he looks like a guy that played in the 90s. I mean, that's, yeah. he looks like if you just picked him up and put him on the teams back when 
Shajan and Terry and some of those guys play. Coach Cagle played. Yeah. He would fit right into the mold of a typical player. Here's a handoff straight up the middle. It's Peanut Dyer who finds some running room. He's still on his feet. He's inside the five, still on his feet, all the way into the end zone. What a run. Wow. He just kept those legs driving. He was getting hit from every direction. He was getting tripped up. They're probably trying to trip him, and he makes it all the way into the end zone, one of the most impressive 36-yard runs you'll ever see. Uh, he was so physical and so quick. That, that's what we've seen and expected out of Peanut Dyer, and, I mean, just absolutely was running over some guys. <laughs> it could have been tackled three or four times, and even at the goal line thought he was going to come up short, and he – Plows his way into the end zone. I, I don't know how he kept his balance from about the 15 all the way in, but somehow he did. Those feet, you can he, tell he's a, an athlete right there. Yes. Here is the snap for the extra point. Kick is up. That's good. Sullins again. It's good. 9.03 to go in the second quarter. It's McMinn County, 28, Ottawa nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Count on Star Regional Medical Center for lung cancer screening. If you're a smoker or a former smoker, age 50 to 80, talk with your primary care provider about our low-dose CT for lung cancer screening. It can detect cancer early when treatment is most effective. Star Regional Medical Center. From the routine to the unforeseen, count on us. Take our free lung health assessment at starregional.com. Come to Osdemit Flooring to take advantage of our policy of match and beat any price on any of the same flooring. We will not be undersold. Get luxury vinyl plank, carpet, sheet vinyl, or beautiful hardwood for the price of your dreams. Do it yourself or our skilled professional installers can get to most jobs within two weeks of purchase for the best rates around. You cannot buy flooring for less unless it's a lot less flooring. Worth the drive and easy to find. Osmond Flooring, Congress Parkway, South Athens, directly across the street from McMinn County High School. We're back at Cherokee Stadium. Jared, 9.03 to go in the second quarter. McMinn pushes the lead to 28 to nothing. It, as sloppy as some of the <laughs> in-betweens have looked, uh, the last couple of plays there have looked pretty impressive defensively and offensively for the Cherokees. And, yep. And hopefully we'll see some more of that peanut dyer run like he just did right there. I, I got to mention something here. Let's let's. We'll stay on Peanut Dyer here after this kick. I want to see Sullins if he kicks it back into the end zone again. And here is the kick. And it is going to carry back. Oh. He knocked it down at the one-yard line, so he's going to be returning the ball straight up the middle. Hitting. Finds a little running oh. room. And there's a big hit by McDermott. <laughs> Mackay McDermott. Stopped everything, stopped him in his tracks. Right it was there. like he ran into the field house wall over there, and it was named <laughs> Mikhail McDermott right there. And there goes Dandy. Oh, Dandy's lost it. Dandy is Spencer still. picked it up. Oh, oh, Spencer. Okay, let's see if we can get Dandy off the field. Yep. There Here comes there's. Dandy. Ball marked at the 29 yard line of Ottawa. Uh, came to this week's junior varsity game, and Peanut Dyer was getting some carries. And he is a sophomore. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, and they wanted to get him some work, and well, he was pounding some it's, junior varsity players. It's paid off right there. <laughs> Let me tell you. I think he was waiting on it. Udawa, quarterback's going to roll to the right side. It's a straight run, but he's going to run into Rouse and Sliger before he gets to the line of scrimmage. I think he's going to lose a yard, likely. Tackle by Rouse. Rouse, good tackle there. And, you know, 835 right here, I don't know if Udawa is going to – they're trying to find a rhythm of some sort. Yeah. And with the backup quarterback in, they've just not been able to establish that outside of when he's been – I mean, he's had a couple of plays where he's had to use his feet and picked up positive yards, but we'll see if they try to do anything different. Yeah. Triple receivers to the left side. And it's going to be handed off to Strickland, who's got good speed. He picks up five, six yards maybe. He's up close to the 35-yard line. Going to mark it back, I think, at the 34-yard line. But it's a pickup of five yards. Going to bring up third down and five. I'm going to have to look. I, I mean, Baldwin has not been back in this game. Yep. I don't know if he got hurt or if he was the ejected player. I don't know. 
I don't see him on the sideline. You might be able to spot him with the binoculars. Third down and five. Looking to the sideline for the call. You got Smallin at quarterback in the backfield, and he has Strickland back there with him. Anudua, they're going to try to talk it over. I think the play clock was getting down on them. Well, and that will be all of their timeouts here in the second quarter, or the first half, I should say. Well, let's take a break with them. 7.28 to go here in the second quarter. McMinn, 28. Udawa, nothing. We'll take a 30-second break. Did you know that All Things Exterior has the largest selection of vinyl siding and metal roofing in this area? Hi, I'm Buffy Jones, inviting you to stop by and see how we can help with your construction or home improvement project. Our prices are competitive and no job is too big or small. Many colors are available within one to two business days. Micah and I have nearly 20 years of experience, so we know the industry. And we have professional installers who can get the job done right. We're located at 723 Congress Parkway South in Athens. All Things Exterior, your one stop shop for vinyl siding, roofing, and more. So Udawa comes back down uh, and sets up at the line of scrimmage. It's third down. It's a long five. They got to get almost to the 40. And I, it looks like Baldwin, there's a number two over there without shoulder pads on. Still it, got his uniform on. So he I think was he hurt or ejected. Here's a long pass down the sideline. Thompson is there, and he was stride for stride with the receiver. Didn't even have to try to make a play on the ball right there with a receiver matched him and just held him off the route. Might have had an opportunity for an interception if if he could have got turned (laughs) around. Yeah. But uh, he was chasing the receiver, but he was right with him. So it's going to be a punting situation for Udawa. And it's Thompson who's going to stay back to receive it. Faulkner's back there as well. Now he's backing up closer to where Thompson is. Here's the snap. It's a good one. Now bobbles it, though. Now he kicks it. And the ball's going to bounce. It's going to take an Udawa bounce inside the 30-yard line. The punter actually, it was a great snap. He just yeah, dropped it. Just dropped it. And the fact he got the a punt that decent off is pretty impressive the, right the there. The fact he didn't get pushed into the ground is nothing short yeah. of a miracle. Well, and I don't, think, in there every I don't time. think the, the punt rush guy saw that he had yep. dropped it or anything because there wasn't that speed trying to go after it that time. But nonetheless, it at least gives McMinn decent field position. Yep, they're going to take over at their own 27-yard line. And they seem to have things rolling a little better now offensively. Now you got to, you know, I know it's been push and shove a little bit this uh the first half of this game, but I think you, you, we got to protect ourselves. We don't need anything that's going to get you kicked out and kicked out another game. Here's a quick pass to the right side to Sliger. It's going to be incomplete. Yeah, got to make sure it wasn't a lateral, but it goes down as an incomplete pass. And Sliger was going to have some running room, I believe. Those little passes out like that. Well, they, they kind of keep the defense a, a little yeah. honest, though, by doing it like that. Second down and 10. In the backfield, it's Peanut Dyer again, along with Sliger. It will be what you would call the the big set, I guess. We'll see who gets the call back. here. And it is Peanut Dyer again. He's going to have to try and break some tackles. He's still he's still wow. trying to move forward. He's over the 30. One, two, three, four, five, six owls to bring him down. Wow. So he's going to be spotted at the 31-yard line. He gained four. But he worked hard enough to gain 20. <laughs> Kept those legs dry. He's hard to bring down. But, yeah, in that JV game, I mean, he was taking on those – JV corners, and I, I say JV corners in the fact, what I'm trying to say is they were a little smaller than what we see out here on Friday night. Right. Boy, and they were trying to take him on in open field, and it wasn't working out well for him. Here's a fake handoff looking to pass. Going to find Sliger to the outside. This time he catches it. That was a nice pass there by Mullins. It's going to be enough for the first down. The hands from your starting linebacker. Yeah. It's just impressive. Um, for the Cherokees right there, Luke Slugger. And what he did is he turned 
and sealed off the the cornerback. Yeah. I mean, he boxed him out, yeah. kind of without a pass interference. Because he was coming anybody, up, right? Yeah. Don't anybody get worried about a pass interference? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just a sweet play by Luke Slager that right was there. A play that I don't know that we've seen because he got a little deeper than just hitting a yes. back out of the out of the uh, backfield. Here's Slager straight up the middle, pounding for <laughs> about twelve or thirteen yards. Wow. Uh, you know, every back on their team is wanting the ball right now. Don't you know? Yeah, and that offensive line's creating some holes against a fairly good-sized interior line from Ottawa right now. That one's just straight up the middle. And this is first-half football. I mean, you know, they're going to tire out. That Ottawa defense is going to get tired. They're going to, they've been out there a few plays now. And I think that's one thing about Ottawa and the program, everybody that's been around McMinn, if you look at Ottawa's sideline, they don't have the depth they used to have. Yeah. Here's a pump fake down the sideline to Dakota Thompson. He's got it, and he's going to score. Who says they can't air it out? <laughs> Who says? It, it's Air Cherokees from the 42-yard line. It's a 42-yard touchdown pass that goes from Mullins to Thompson. Thompson having a big game tonight already as well. A lot of Cherokees are, and that's going to push the score to 34 to nothing with a point after coming. <laughs> what a play right there. A little pump fake by... Brady Let's got see. it. Are they going to go for two? Or? Yep, they're going to go for two. They're going to hand it off and straight into the end zone. It is good. Who's who's picked that ball up? Can you see, Jared? I think it was Landon Fagans. Yep. Yep. Fagans carries for the two point conversion. So with 5.14 to go here in the second quarter, McMinn 36, Ottawa nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Simmons Bank is proud to be part of our communities. I'm Shane Whaley, Regional President of our East Tennessee Market. Simmons believes that healthy, vibrant communities don't just happen on their own. They happen when people make investments in each other because we accomplish more together than we do alone. For more than 100 years, Simmons has worked hard to help make customers' dreams come true, like buying a home, starting a business, or managing money safely and securely. Visit us today. Simmons Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lending. Hello, this is Renee with Madison Avenue Pharmacy. Here at your only independently owned Health Mart Pharmacy, we can save you a trip to your provider or urgent care center by providing on-the-spot testing for illnesses such as flu, strep, and COVID. We can also provide medications if you have positive results. Madison Avenue Pharmacy is open from 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturday. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, 1001 West Madison Avenue, Athens. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. So here's the kickoff. We're back at Cherokee Stadium, 5.14 to go. McMinn leads 36 to nothing over Ottawa. Here's the kickoff that will carry into the end zone. No return. And let's see if Dandy's coming out here. I guess it's a she. Finds the tee. Gets a good grip on it this time, making her way back to the sideline. Oh, and dropped it as it got close to the... Hey, we need a smaller tee or something. I don't I'm know. telling you, Spencer's <laughs> using too big think, of a tee. I think she's done a great job, though. Yep. The new phenomenon here in McMinn County, Dandy. I hope we're getting that on on film, yep. Mr. Josh Bogus. I think he is. Sent him a message. Had some people texting me about it. And Josh hooking them up with the video footage. Ottawa will start at their own 20 yard line. I've seen now, that in Neyland Stadium, but. First yeah. time I've seen it here at McMinn, <laughs> the Cherokee Stadium. I like it. Now, Ottawa, I mean, you're down mercy rule unless you put some points on the board right it, here. Exactly. Now, I, whoa, big hit by Rouse in the backfield. That was Strickland trying to find some running room. There was none. And now this defensive line kind of taking over, getting a lot of pushback. I'm, I'm not – I think the mercy rule, my understanding is you got to be in the second half. Second half, yep, yep. So it, the clock will still stop, I believe, this last four minutes and 50 seconds. Remember that once again at halftime, we've got uh, Shazan Bradley and Terry Moore, two uh, former Cherokee greats. They're here back home for homecoming. And they'll be up here for Cherokee chat at halftime. We'll talk about this first half a little. I think they will like what they've seen of the Cherokees. Here is a rollout to the left side. Looking for a receiver, knocked away by Sharp, who got an arm. Did a nice job of coming around the receiver, getting an arm to knock the pass away. He did an outstanding job 
and and the speed of Sharp right there, I think you saw it as him coming from behind the receiver. I mean, the receiver made a little curl and had a couple of steps on him. Yep. Jacob just kind of closes out quickly. Reminds you a little bit of Davion Evans last year. Yes. And the way he could close out defensively on receivers. He, you know, he's playing a little more and more like Evans. Uh, yes. Uh, yep. As we progress here, just a junior. He's going to be back next year, folks. And let's see, a roll out to the left side. Again, he's having to throw. And this is picked off. It's Cam Miller who's going to take it to inside the 20, inside the 15 to the 10. There's flags down everywhere. He pushes his way into the end zone for a touchdown. But we got four flags on the field, and this was all after the interception. And Miller just <laughs> is deflated. He was so happy about <laughs> scoring. And uh, you can't believe the flags are down. But nonetheless, it's going to be another interception. That ball got deflected three or four times. And we'll yeah. wait for the calls. I, I mean, I'm guessing this is going to be something on the Cherokees. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a hold or a block in the back. I mean, the interception will stand. <laughs> and Miller's yeah, over there Miller going, come on, guys. still can't believe it. He goes, I had it. Y'all didn't I need did, to do anything. I didn't need the blocking. I went to the <laughs> other side of the field. He, he just rammed himself into the end. I think he had a nice stiff arm down there about the one. You might be able to watch the replay there. So here are the calls. It's going to be a personal foul, decline, personal foul. I, I don't know if that was Let's like see. a crack back like, or yeah. blindside block. Blindside or, block. So there was probably two fouls maybe during that run back. So this one I think will be uh, – Marked off from the point of the foul, I think. And it was Josh Rouse that tipped that play at the line of scrimmage yep. and or got the deflection. And Cam the Miller team. able to get a nice interception there for himself. Yeah, and you are exactly right. There was a nice stiff arm by Cam Miller right at the goal line. So the ball is going to be marched back to the 30. Eight-yard line, we'll call it. McMahon takes over at the Uldawa 38-yard line. I'm running out of space on my so that's, scorecard. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> I need that 412 to roll <laughs> off so we don't have to get creative here on the last line. So that is the third interception of the game. Here is a handoff to Tarzan White, and he's going to be inside the 30-yard line to the 29. And he's going to be a yard short of the first down. Clock will continue to run now under four minutes here in the first half. We're going to see a lot of players in the second yes. half. If uh, if you're out here and you've got a younger player, boy, it's a good shot that they're going to see some playing time in the second half. Clock will run continuously. If the score stays at 35 points or above, it's at 36 now, and the Cherokees are threatening. Slager goes in motion, and they hit him out on the right side. It's complete, but only for a short gain, and maybe not a gain at all. Yeah, if anything, maybe a couple of inches. And I don't know. We'll call it the 29 still. Yeah, that's still where they're at. But it's still third down. Came to the short side of the field that time. Just not a lot of running room there. They had it covered pretty well. And on the previous play right there, um, or the touchdown pass a minute ago, they faked that little swing pass out to Faulkner on the screen yep. that freed up Dakota, or Dakota Thompson on the uh, streak down the sideline. So that time, I think Udawa defended both better than they had in the previous series by the Cherokees. Slager and White in the backfield. It's going to go to Tarzan White, who almost – he had a, he had a straight shot to the end zone if he keeps his footing there. But he is knocked down, but not after getting the first down, down to the 21-yard line. Pickup of eight. And he knew he had it too. He's trying to bear crawl his way yeah. back to his feet and just could not get up quick he wanted, enough. He wanted that third touchdown. And as I said, every back for McMahon wanting to get the ball right now. One guy that we're not seeing carry, getting carries tonight uh, is Sharp after his initial touchdown. He's not getting – they're working out some other players back yep. there. White getting a lot of carries. Sliger back there. And Brady Mullins. Here's a right up the middle. They will not stop Tarzan White this time. 21-yard touchdown run. 
by Taylor Tarzan White. Taylor White. Taylor's the sister. Outstanding <laughs> again. Just a blocking by that offensive line on the right side of the line. Finds the hole and just uses that speed to go through it. Nice run there by White. That's his third touchdown of the night. Thompson into hole for the extra points. Still Sullins kicking extra points. It's now 42 to nothing. And here's the extra point. It's up and it's good. So 210 now to go in the first half. It's McMinn County 43, Ulawa nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Companion Funeral Home of Athens appreciates the opportunity to have served thousands of families in McMinn and surrounding counties since opening their doors in 2017. If you've ever considered making pre-arrangements to take the burden off of your family and make sure your wishes are carried out, they'll treat you with respect and walk you through the process as if you were a member of their own family. They also accept pre-arrangements from other funeral homes. For a no-obligation consultation, call Companion Funeral Home at 423-453-2302 or stop by 400 South White Street. Visit online at companionfunerals.com. Hey, do you look around your home and think, man, it needs some help? Hiwassee Builder Supply has what you need. Serving East Tennessee since 1958, we can handle projects big and small. Whether it's a kitchen remodel, replacing doors or windows, or a new roof, or a new build from the ground up, we got the supplies. Contact us today, 423-745-4704, or visit us online at hiwassee.com. Our team can help you accomplish your remodel or building dreams. We are proud to support Naming County Athletics. Back at Cherokee Stadium, two minutes and ten seconds to go. Tarzan White has just scored his third touchdown of the night. It was a 21-yard scamper into the end zone. He almost did it the play before. <laughs> and the extra point was good. And it's now 43 to nothing. This one taken at the one-yard line. He fumbles it back in the end zone and they blow the whistle. That was kind of interesting. He 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 yeah. took that. They were going to let him run it out. He dropped it, and it went back into the end zone, and they blew the whistle. That seemed like just a fumble. Here's Dandy yeah. getting the tee again, getting better every time. The crowd extended an ovation <laughs> for the dog. I like it. <laughs> Student section, cheerleaders cheering Dandy on. That's pretty awesome. So two minutes and nine seconds is what Ottawa is going to have to do something here, starting from their own 20-yard line. That was a weird play, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it seemed uh, like he would have had to pick that up. He's the one that fumbled it into right. the end zone. He didn't catch it in the end zone. It, I mean, Unless I they're know. saying he never had control or something like that. Because they treat it as a muffed kick or something. And here's a handoff to Strickland along the left side. Faulkner came up, and now Fagans finishes the tackle. Strickland's slow to get up. There's a flag down. It's in the area of holding. Came down pretty quickly in, in the play. We'll see what the call is. And McMahon probably going to decline it. Looking to the sideline. Looking Coach Cagle's walking all the way down this way. And he's yeah, this is gonna be Brad Bennett. He's gonna take Brad Bennett's gonna take it. Well, they're talking though, folks. Yeah, they got the headsets. They got the headsets on. That's the next thing. I've got the I got the video <laughs> from the coaches. I need to get the headset up here, an extra headset. So. <laughs> it's like those NASCAR headsets yeah. when you're in the in the uh, pit with them. That way we'll have all the intel. So this is going to go back to the 10-yard line with the penalty. It's going to remain first down, but it's going to be first down and 20. That clock running now, and I think that's the biggest key is yeah. Udawa taking their time, being very patient. Play Udawa. clock down to eight. Yeah, and they don't have any more timeouts. So Small and the replacement quarterback in the game. Here's the snap. They hand it off to Strickland. He, they're going to go with Strickland. Oh There's a big my. hit. And he's taking some big hits. Let's see who was in on that one. That was Fagans too, wasn't it? It's either. Yep. Was Fagans, is, Fagans is absolutely just teeing off on people right now. He's another one that I would have liked to have seen played with these guys who are getting ready to talk to you at halftime. But yep, Shazan Bradley I mean, and Terry Moore back up here in the press box now. We're going to get them in. There was another holding call, but they'll decline that one. 
and just keep it there. So it's going to be second and 20. Yeah, well, we start, well, the play started at the 10. They inched it up to maybe 12, 12. probably. It's probably yeah. second and 18. Let's call it the 12. Those yeah, lines get, like may have another back in there right now. I'm not sure. Might be, tw- it might be 29, 28 or 29. 29. So he's going to get the carry this time, breaks it back to the right side, finds a little running room up nice. close to the 25-yard line, and here's a penalty flag late. Came in late. I don't know if that was a late hit or what. We'll have to see if Caden Douglas targeting. Golly. That's a tough one right there. Face oh, mask. Oh, face mask. Yep. Okay. So that's going to cost them 15 more. It's going to give Udawa a first down. We're down to a minute and one second to go uh, here in the second quarter. If you're just joining us, it's been all McMinn County tonight. It's McMinn County 43, Udawa nothing. We will go into the mercy rule once the second half begins. That means there will be a running clock until such time that Udawa might be able to fight back and get the lead down to 35 points or less. We're going to see a lot of young players in this game in the second half, I would imagine. Maybe this first unit comes out for a series, not sure. But some young players are going to get some valuable playing yeah, time. Definitely, and it's happened a couple of times and this year, and you always like it. Here is a handoff to the left side, and once again, that is Douglas on the left side. And he's going to be up to the 44-yard line. He's shown probably the most speed out of the backfield for the Owls so far. Yep, now they're getting in Curtis Carter in the backfield, 33. So they're running some people in and out. Going to hand off to him. He's a big fella, but he's yep. going to go down after a short gain up to the 35. They might give him the thir- or 45. They might give him the 46. Put him back in the backfield after being on the defensive line. and he ran. I think he ran a couple early in the game as well. Giving the 46. They cannot stop the clock, so that's going to do it. It's just going to run out, and that's going to that's going to be the way this half ends. Well, folks, it's been all McMinn County here tonight through the first half. They play a team that Ottawa comes in at one and four, certainly uh, trying to get things together. But the first thing we notice right at the flip of the coin is their starting quarterback uh, was not in full pads. He was just in his jersey. Uh, so they've got a replacement quarterback out here tonight, and uh, it's showing just a little bit. So at halftime, the scores: McMinn County 43, Ottawa nothing. Remember, Shazan Bradley and Terry Moore will be joining us here at for Cherokee Chat in just a few minutes. Right now, we're going to take a 60-second break. We'll come back and we'll recap the first half, and uh, then we'll go into Cherokee Chat after that. So uh, right now, let's take a 60-second break. McMinn County 43, Ottawa nothing. l and Motors, your local Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealer, is a proud supporter of McMinn County Cherokee Athletics. Brothers Leon and Marvin Hammond founded l and Motors back in 1966, and under Kevin Hammond's direction, it's still going strong at 1001 South White Street in Athens. Go see Kevin and the crew at l and Motors for all your Chrysler Dodge Ram and Jeep needs. l and Motors says, go Tribe! Tennessee Wesleyan University offers more than 80 majors and minors at the undergraduate and graduate level. With the TWU Pledge, students may be eligible to attend tuition-free. A 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio ensures students receive individualized attention. And Tennessee Wesleyan remains one of the most affordable colleges in the region. Visit tnwesleyan.edu to learn more about on-campus and online opportunities. Choose blue at Tennessee Wesleyan University. Back at Cherokee Stadium, and here's a recap of the first half. It's been all McMinn County. McMinn County 43, Ottawa nothing. Ottawa took the uh, opening kickoff. Actually, McMinn won the toss. They deferred to the second half, which means McMinn is going to have the ball coming back out in the second half. Ottawa started at their own 20. They'd be pushed back to the 18, and on fourth down, 
There was a high snap to the punter. He wasn't able to bring it down. Tried to run with the football, but was taken down at the Ottawa five-yard lines. It went down as a turnover on downs. McMinn County two plays later, 10-24 to go in the first quarter. And it was a six-yard touchdown run by Jacob Sharp. The extra point was good by Sullins. It was seven to nothing. Ottawa took over again at their own 20. They put a nice little drive together for a while, made it all the way up to midfield, got pushed back a little bit with a penalty back to the 34-yard line and had to punt. McMinn County comes out, and on the fourth play, the fourth play of the drive, there's a 73-yard touchdown run by Tarzan White. It would be his first of three touchdowns here in the first half. That was with 4.07 to go. Extra point was good by Sullins, 14 to nothing. Ottawa took over on their own 33. They picked up a first down, made it up to the 48-yard line, got pushed back again to the 35-yard line, uh, and, and then they had to punt. On this particular punt, Dakota Thompson uh, carries to the near side of the field. He gets tackled, and then there's some... Homecoming court was nominated by their peers to represent McMinn County High School. This year's homecoming court nominees are... Starting with the freshmen. First, Miss Ava Peak. Ava is being escorted by J.C. Evans. Ava is the daughter of Brandy and Daryl Peak, and J.C. is the son of Angela Brown. Next is Miss Trinity Riedel. Trinity is escorted by Elijah Hacker. Trinity is the daughter of Brittany Riedel and Cedric Arnwine. Elijah is the son of Heather and Jay Hacker. And now representing the sophomores, first up is Miss Kyra Watson. Kyra is being escorted by Kobe Cook. Kyra is the daughter of Felicia and Todd Watson. Kobe is the son of Wendy and Jackie Cook. And next for the sophomores is Miss Brianna Wilkins. Brianna is being escorted by Camden Crisp. Brianna is the daughter of Sarah Beth and Cody Wilkins. Camden is the son of Brittany and Cody Crisp. And now for the juniors. First, is Miss Keela Compton. Keela is being escorted by Christian Cooper. Keela is the daughter of Patricia and Matthew Compton. Christian is the son of Amber and Chris Hooper. And next up is Miss Taylor Sears. Taylor is being escorted by Jace Smith. Taylor's the daughter of Victoria and Aaron Ferguson, and Jace is the son of Aaron Smith. And now to represent the seniors, first up is Miss Lexi Cooley. Lexi is being escorted by Martin Castellanos. Lexi is the daughter of Angela and Brian Cooley. Her plans after high school are to attend the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga, where she will play softball and major in biology. Martin is the son of Elidia Castellanos and Martin Rodriguez. Martin plans after high school to attend the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, where he will major in engineering. Next is Ms. Tio Madrano. Tio is being escorted by Israel Smith. Tio is the daughter of Nurabel and Guillermo Madrano. Her plans after high school are to complete an esthetician program. Israel is the son of Casey Smith and Heather McCartney. He plans on joining the Marines and becoming a combat engineer. Next is Miss Emma Plemons. Emma is being escorted by Emmanuel Sandoval. Emma is the daughter of Christy and Brad Landers and Lynn and Amy Plemons. 
and her plans to attend Cleveland State Community College after high school and major in biology where she will then transfer to the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga and study to become a labor and delivery nurse. Emmanuel is the son of Maria Fusil and Juan Sandoval. Emmanuel plans to attend the University of Tennessee in Knoxville and major in electrical engineering. And next is Miss Amani Sanders. Amani is being escorted by Logan Wilcox. Amani is the daughter of Latasha Paris, T. Sanders, and Ray Stone. She plans to attend Texas A&M and major in marine biology. Logan is the son of Elizabeth and Chad Wilcox, and Logan plans on majoring in music. Britton Innes is being escorted by Sam Bailey. Britton and Sam are the 2023 Princess and Prince for homecoming. Britton is the daughter of Ashton and Eric Innes, and Sam is the son of Devin and Andy Bailey. The 2022 homecoming queen, Peyton Oliver, and 2022 homecoming king, Zamel Mercer, will crown the 2023 homecoming king and queen. Your 2023 homecoming king, Mr. Emmanuel. for your 2023 homecoming queen. It's Miss Amani Sanders. Ladies and gentlemen, let them hear you. Your 2023 homecoming king and queen and your entire homecoming court.
that's where I where I coach at now. Um, we're big on that, and we're big on JV games. I mean, we have 20 JV games because sooner or later, when those young guys, freshmen and sophomores, who are not getting Friday night reps, and they start getting those reps on, and then in the game on Friday night, when you get to the playoffs, when you need that depth. You've um, been there. You've been there. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. it's going to help you win even more. So um, that's tremendous, and I hope Bo goes to that very quickly. Well, and another thing, being under the lights, being able to see the game, slows the game down for you. Yes. I know at the University of Tennessee, I mean, first two or three games, you can hear a crowd. After that, you can't hear the crowd. You can actually, really? you sit down and talk to each other, and it's like, what's up? This guy's like 20 yards away from you, and you know exactly what he's saying. It's like the crowd's not even there. So it gives them a chance to get used to the speed. And like I said, depth, depth, depth is important, especially in, 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 in today, because we got, even in the colleges, because you have so many schools got transfer portal in here you got high schools got all these different high schools you only got a certain amount of players yeah back in the day you'd have five six seven all-stars stacked up on top of one another yeah. now you don't so right. those reps from a young guy is important for him as a young guy to be able to feel in and give you depth but at the same time as he gets older and he now he's a senior and he's like, what, what you think you're gonna do yeah exactly one thing uh i'd note too peanut dyer the one we're talking about ran that 36 yarder Broke a lot of tackles there. Just a sophomore. He, uh, and by the way, he's a sprinter on the track we team as tell. well. I mean, the, the, when we get him in the open, when he gets there, boy, he's, he's going to be gone. But uh, here's a guy that as a sophomore hadn't been getting a lot of snaps the last couple of games. So they played him this earlier this week, Monday night, on, on JV yeah, and gave him some snaps. And, uh, and by the way, it was a little brutal on some JV defensive backs <laughs> that were kind of attack. But, you know, getting that work in. As a as a junior varsity player, and then coming out here on Friday night, that kind of stuff pays off. Oh, there's no doubt about that. But the name, you got with that kind of speed, you got to get him on the outside. Yep. Can he catch the ball? Can we get him on a slant? Can we pitch it outside to him? You got to get him on the edge. If you get him on the edge and let him go, let him run. You know what I mean? And, that, and, that, and that's you know you know we're running kind of the spread now, and we're running the wing tee, wing tee. I mean, one thing about offense is you have to have the players to do so. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, you, that, that's the name. You know, you got to be able to switch and, and go back and forth. So, it'll be interesting to see if they can get him in the right position. Can he catch? I, I don't know. Yeah. But I'd have him right on the edge because let me tell you something. He get it, it's over. Well, yeah. the good thing with um, freshmen and sophomores who haven't got a lot of reps, when they come from Little League, the game speed's different. Yeah. So, it, the JV games helps that. As it goes on, and then when you can plug them in on a Friday night and they start getting more used to that game speed, then you can use them even more. And that's the biggest thing with the young ones is getting them up to game speed so they can play with us. Most most freshmen can come in and play, yeah. Um, but it's, it's where they recognize the game speed or not, and that's where they usually falter a little bit because they're still thinking Little League, oh, I can make that cut or I can get outside here. And, and don't get it because they don't have the right game speed. I, I, I have an – oh, you met my younger son today, but I have an older son that's that's 37, and he played uh, high school football at Powell, was quarterback. And he went in early, a sophomore, let's say, and, and got some plays. And I remember him coming home that night, and I was talking to him about it, and he said, Dad – it's like they snapped it, and there was 10 <laughs> seconds of blur, and it was over. Yes, sir. 10 That's seconds. What... And, but then, mm-hmm. before long, it's just football. It's just yes. football. But, and, but you got to get those snaps in. And, yes, and, and you're right. And, and, that, and that was the name of the game. Ten years ago, I brought 7-on-7 seven seven to, to Tennessee. Yeah. Nobody had ever saw 7-on-7. Seven seven. Well, I, you know, I went to the University of Tennessee. I'm a freshman. I'm a linebacker. And all of a sudden, they, they break up. And basically, what we were doing is playing 7-on-7, seven seven, Andy Kelly being the quarterback. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. So, you, now you're looking for, you know, you, you teach, quarterbacks learn how to read couple one, cover two, cover three. Okay, at the same time, he's learning how to move his people to get the matchup. Yeah. You know, like, you know, if, if Terry's the receiver, of course he want to be matched up against me because they can't catch it. So that's what you're trying to do. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. and, 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 and like I said, it's, it's another way of, of, of seeing the game. So, it's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, so, Suzanne, I want to talk to you about, uh, you, you had a health scare recently with COVID. Oh, oh no, it's not, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's kind of sad. It was, um, it, it, it's sad. It, it's um, it, it's COVID, which, it, and it's funny because um, you know, I remember our friend, my friends were like, "Well, oh, this this ain't real, ain't real." I said, "Man, you know how many people I know? I know millions of people. This thing ain't real. Oh, this, oh, this, this is moving around." <laughs> Until hey, my friends were the same way until they saw me when I came home. They was like, "Whoa, this thing's real." Yeah. You know, and it, yeah. you know, like I said, it it it, 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 it almost ended. It was I was I was I think I flatlined two or three times. Heart depopulations. 
Um, um, you know, you know, and afterwards, you know, I think your your your, your body it, it'll never be the same. It, yep. it, it's robbed. Yeah. Um, it, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's just sad that what happened ha- happened and what happened, but it's it's it's, it's life. Um, but you know, it's it, um, like I said, I you know, you know, my son talked and he's like, Dad, you you're not the guy you used to be, and you gotta remember that. You know, I'm 800 miles away. Yeah. I'm not here to take care of you. You gotta take care of yourself. You gotta be smart <laughs> enough to know. You know what I mean? So, but you know, it's um. You do the best you can. I yeah. mean, I got, you know, I, I got, I came out blessed. Yeah. Um, I have other friends that have a lot of short time memory loss. Yeah. Some like lung issues. Yeah. Others got, you know, whatever. I mean, because one thing about the disease is whatever's weak on your body, that's what it's going to attack. Yeah. You know what I mean? And mine was my lungs. Yeah. So, I mean, because they were like, you know, um, um, they were like, he's not coming around. He's not coming around. And, and finally, my insurance called him and said, "Have you guys done an MRI on his on his head and on his um, lungs?" They was like, "No, nah. you probably need to do that." Yeah. And they were like, they never had nobody's insurance to call. They were like, "Whoa, why, why would y'all be calling us?" Cause I, I got that kind of insurance. Yeah. But anyway, they were like, "Do that." And they done the head. There's nothing there. And they done the lungs. And that's that's what the problem was. Well, I'll tell you, you had a lot of folks right here in this county praying for you, I'm sure, all over the state of Tennessee and probably all over the world. I appreciate I, I, I really appreciate it. I'm uh, great. Being his cousin yes. slash brother, um, I was there the whole time, and and, and he's, he's, he's kind of sugarcoating a little bit. When we brought Shazan home, he was almost 100 pounds underweight. Yeah. Um, he couldn't walk. He had to learn how to walk again, how to do a lot of stuff again. And just from his, his past behavior of just being – that strong, I'm going to get through this mentality. He's back to being Osha's on um, when a lot of people would have never made it back. So, testimony. Very good, guys. I, I just want to thank you again, and, and we only we're getting ready to go back to play here in a second. Thank you guys for uh, sacrificing your time to uh, to be with us tonight, and and just to, to be here at pregame, come back coming back up here. I know you got lots of people that are wanting just wanting to talk to you and wanting your time but we appreciate it. you're always welcome yes sir and if you guys are here please come up and see me because we want to talk to this you this is give us a, a good a good a good reason a good way to, to come back home and god is good and god is good all the time yes sir. and um and, you know i go all around the world and they want to where are you from and, and i always tell them it's not it's not it's not where you're at it's where you're from i'm from mcmahon county and it's how we treat people it's how we talk to them and this is what it's all about Thank you, Shazan. Uh, Terry, any last words here before uh, you head out? Last words is um, I come home. I, I want to try to reach a young man, and um, it, it only takes one. I yep. mean, um, I want to try to reach a young man and, and tell them he has a chance if he wants to take advantage of everything that's out there. But um, there, there's, there's no stopping unless you allow it to be stopped. So these young men and women here who are not in good situations like I was and Shazan was when we was growing up, we didn't make excuses. We just did what we needed to do to get to where we needed to be. And, um, and right now, we both winded up in a good place. And, um, and I want that for our, our young men and women here. And, um, and maybe want to come back and, and make Mickman County bigger than Chattanooga or Knoxville yep. with uh, an idea. So that's, that's what we want. Uh, we want these young men and women um, who's playing our sports and learning those characteristics on how to win and how to uh, have a strong mental a capacity and um and come back and do great things for for our county and and, and um for our area thank you nick guys shazan bradley terry moore guys thank you so much we're going to take a quick break we'll be back with statistics from the first half and we'll be kicking it off here uh in just about three minutes you're listening to cherokee football on 101.7 fm wjsq back in 60 seconds Athens Insurance, we're here for you. When you call, we'll be there. There's nothing we can't do. With integrity and excellence, we will see you through. There's nothing too hard for us to handle, nothing we can't do. At Athens Insurance, we'll be here for you. Athens Insurance, serving East Tennessee since 1931. Upgrade your kitchen with new appliances from Plaza Electronics and Appliances. Discover Gen Air, Thermador, Sub-Zero, Wolf, and Viking Luxury Kitchen Appliances or KitchenAid's Black Stainless Appliances. Sporting events and movies come to life on a new TV from Plaza. They have Samsung, LG, and Sony TVs. 
ranging from 37 to 82 inches, offering 12 months same as cash, free delivery, and setup, and they service what they sell. Proud to be serving the area for over 32 years. Plaza Electronics and Appliances. Visit them at their new location sure, in the I former home of Staples I've got 150, at 1609 Congress Parkway right. South, Athens. 10 for 150. Back at Cherokee Stadium, and we are joined by Terry Stansel. Terry, lots of penalties and lots of <laughs> scoring. I think that's what he was just talking about. Lots of scoring. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to talk about the penalties yet, but I will say that at first time in my career that I have seen a school that has more penalty yards than rushing yards. Wow. Okay, let's wow. get to okay, it. Okay, with Udawa, I've got him with 13 yards rushing on 22 carries, averaging just over a half yard a carry, 36 yards in the air on six completions for 49 yards. They've punted the ball three times for a 43-yard average. For the Cherokees, 217 yards on the ground on 15 rushing attempts, averaging 14.4 yards a carry, 68 yards in the air on three completions for 285 yards for the first half. Uh, Jacob Sharp, two carries for six yards. Talon White, seven for 150, averaging 21.4 yards a carry. Luke Slager, three for 21, averaging seven yards a carry. And Jacob uh, Jacarian Dyer, two for 40, averaging 20 yards a carry. Uh, Brady's three of six in the air, no interception, 68 yards. And Dakota Thompson's uh, the leading receiver with one reception for 42 is the longest. Uh, it's not a real pretty game. No, it, <laughs> it, it was even uglier before we kind of stretched the lead out there a little bit. Um, but at, at least we're to the mercy rule Yes, now. we are. We are. So Yeah, I, I, we talked a lot about, and I talked it with Shazan and Terry there, playing up to your competition, Oak Ridge game a week ago. Yes. Playing down to your competition. Yeah, no question about uh, it. And, no and question. sometimes that happens. It does. And I think that's what we saw early on, but McMinn kind of got things turned around. Uh, so we'll look forward to an exciting Absolutely. second half. We're getting ready to Absolutely. get going. Thank you, Terry. And Jared, we'll hit some scores here uh, yeah. as we start the second half. Uh, Trying to run down some of them that have updated since halftime went off. But we've got several. It's going to be called blowout weekend is what we'll call it because that's pretty much every game that I'm looking up. That's what's turned into. See, it's interesting that uh, – that's how some weeks go. And, you know, yes. it's, it's kind of like the, some of those college football weekends. Like, yep. where's the big game at? It just, it's just a <laughs> scheduling yes. weird thing or something. But uh, here's the kickoff to open up the second half. Uldawa kicks it. It's a squibbly kick that's going to be picked up at the 22. And the run back, I'm not sure who is running that back there. He was hit immediately. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think that's 88, I believe. Nathan, Nathan Kessler, Kessler there. Bobbled it just a little bit and then picked it up, but he was immediately hit. So let's see who the Cherokees bring out here, and it's going to be uh, some young players. Definitely so, is. And so coming in at quarterback is Luke Lawson. And Lawson is 5'10", 138, freshman in at quarterback. A baseball stud, too. And here's a carry on the right side. He's going to have positive yardage. We're going to see it's good hard running right there. We'll see who that is. We got some new numbers in here we're going to have to pay close attention to. Is that 30? 39. 39, and that is Winston Coffey. And he's he's been getting some carries when these guys have been in, and he's looked pretty impressive. So Winston Coffey. Picks up eight yards. It's up to the to the 29-yard line. This started at the 21 of McMinn. Here's a handoff around right tackle again, and he's going to be pushed forward close to a first down. That's going to be Drew Bottoms. And here and we, here go, we again. go again. We're already pushing. we got a coach that's out on the field. He's pulling a bunch of guys Trying off. Trying to get his field. team out of there. Yep. So a late flag there was Drew Bottoms on the carry. He was going to have enough for the first down. But we'll see how this shakes down. And I didn't see exactly what happened there. I didn't either. I'll try to turn my uh, replay device on over here so we can. And it uh, kind of cuts it off, so I don't know that we'll be able to see it, but all the way. Cherokees are backing up. And there's been an ejection. So we'll see. 
There was a there was, foul against the Cherokees. Yep, so we had a player ejected there. I'm not sure if that, that typically means there might have been a swing, a, a, right, a, a punch fist, a punch came out. Arm motion going forward. Mm -hmm. The ball is setting on the 32-yard line, and it's going to be a dead ball foul, I believe, so they would have had the first down. But these are these are things we got to really clean up right here. Yeah, you can't. I mean, if this happened last week against Oak Ridge, the score might be similar to this, but the opposite way for the Cherokees. Yes. And I, I don't see that they've taken anybody out for McMinn, but got a whole I, host of new players. I think they one of the linemen came okay. out. You got uh, Bryce Mullins out there at the other wide out. Run down some names for yeah. you real quick. 76 will be Ty Miller on the offensive line. Uh, left tackle, it looks like 71. Left guard is going to be Jonah Dalton. The center, if they will stand still for a second, will be able to look better. 72, that will be Philip Hamby. 63, no, 64. On the offensive line will be Tucker Robertson. And then they keep backing them up. 74 will be Bo Placenthal. So... So this is back to let's call it the set. Let's well, we'll call it the 18-yard line with the penalty. And there's, yeah, yeah. Now they're calling it first down. But I think yeah. the, the yard marker should be moved back as well to that first down marker. Now they're doing yeah, that. So go. now here we go. First down and ten. Ball at the 18-yard line of McMinn. Remember, the clock is running already down to seven minutes and 50 seconds. We ain't done anything. Here's a run around the end. It's Bottoms again looking for running room. He's going to be stuck pretty hard. Here's a flag down. That I might, that's going to be a face mask. Yeah, that might have something to do with the tackle that time. We saw Bottoms uh, a couple of weeks ago against Tyner, and he's got some speed back there. He, he's he a smaller back right now, but some big speed. And he runs hard. Yep. As does Coffee. I mean, there's some guys coming up. You can already see it. It's, it's early in their careers, but you can see that. This is going to be a five-yard face mask, I believe. The ball yep. had been run up to the 28-yard line. Also got 35 in there. That will be Walker Combs for the Cherokees. Kind of playing in that almost fullback position. The ball's at the McMinn 33-yard line, and it's first and 10 again. Here's the handoff. It's Coffee trying to find some running room, breaks a tackle. It looked like he was going to be taken down the backfield, still pushing. I mean, we've got to get some control out there. Especially Luke, Luke Lawson, to his credit, trying to get his lineman yep. back to the huddle, which is what needs to happen. And knowing his mom and dad, I think that's uh, exactly the leadership you expect, even from a young guy like that, being the quarterback. So, ball and to the 30-yard line. Second down and eight from the 30. You got to get to the 38. 29, Lincoln Watson will be the running back now behind Lawson. Lincoln gets uh, quite a few carries there in the in junior varsity as well. He can run the football well. Bottoms, Bottoms that time no gain, so it's going to be third down and eight. Running clock again. We're down to five minutes and and uh, 50 seconds left in the third quarter. <laughs> going to be really quick second half it is we kind of deserve that after that yeah but. second quarter here's the handoff straight up the middle that might be i think it was bottoms again or no that watson, is watson maybe watson yep, that's watson correct. straight up the middle he fights forward for a yard up to the 31 and it's going to bring on a punt situation for the cherokees so that drive started pretty good. Just some got in, got in a little work there. Yep. So it's going to be fourth down and a long five, maybe six. After. Sullen's in to punt. And it wow. is a great punt, way high. And it's going to be I, whoa. It's going to be taken by the receiver. He's taken down hard. Jackson nice Montgomery. 
Montgomery nailed him. That ball, to, it looked like it hit a Cherokee, then hit the Ottawa return man, but n there was no sandbags thrown or anything like that. I thought it might have hit a Cherokee first. That's what it kind of looked like it had hit. Um, I believe that's Ethan Faulkner. That was a nice spiraling punt that turned over for Sullins. Ottawa takes over at their own 29-yard line. Yep, it bounced off of Faulkner's leg and into the hands of the return man there is what it looks like on the film. Like so that should have been maybe marked down where he, yep. where Faulkner hit it, but no call. Here is the handoff to Strickland trying to find some running room. He's going to be pushed back. Stop on the whistle, guys. Let's, no flags. Over to the 30-yard line to the 32, I believe, a pickup of three. Terry, I'll kind of throw out some scores right yeah, now. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Elizabethan, Terry Moore's uh, stomping grounds there. 33 to nothing at half over Sullivan East. That was a wow. uh, region battle. Um, Farragut last night lost to Bearden 21 to 14. Bradley Central is winning 28 to 16 now over Heritage in the fourth quarter. That's Heritage out of Georgia. Yes. Uh, Anderson County blanks Carter 49 to nothing. We'll get some more in just Here's a few. the snap again to Strickland. They're just going straight to him. He finds running room. Across the right side, he breaks a tackle and gets the first down up over the 40-yard line. Some big runs there. Greg Frazier might tackle. have been in on that tackle Ooh. on the far side. He's going to be coming out. You can hear some pop of the yep. pads there. Uh, Cleveland over Red Bank in the fourth quarter, 44-7. to seven. Red Bank's usually a state contender, and yep. that's impressive. Maryville. Uh, beats Harden Valley 48 to seven. Carnes beats Fulton seven to six. A little baseball wow. <laughs> action there. Uh, West Knox West beats Maryville Heritage 48 to 14. Powell up 34 to 17 over Knox Halls, and Halls is undefeated five and zero. Oh. Uh, here is a handoff along the right side. Breaks into the open. He's going to be inside the 35. Finally taken down just inside the 30 yard line. And once again, that was Douglas, Caden Douglas, who's been inserted in there a few times. And he does take it all the way down to the McMinn 29 yard line. Thought he was going to break that one. I did six. too. Uh, the only region score I have is Walker Valley is up late in the third quarter, 42 to 12 over Ray County at home. So no score update from Howard and East Hamilton. I will tell you that Powell Halls is that is the McMahon Bradley of. That's what I was going to say. A little Powell. rivalry action it's a there. Big rivalry up there. Battle of Beaver Creek. Here is a run by Strickland. I think that is around the left end, and he is going to score. Pushed into the end zone, but uh, no call down there. It's going to be six points with a minute forty-three to go here in the third quarter. And. They do You've stop the clock, I guess, for a score. For the, I think, for the PATs. Yeah. But you, I mean, you've got a lot of young guys playing defensively. A lot of guys without the experience. So. Um, that was Strickland, I, I think, on yep. the run. And then you've got still a lot of starters in for Ottawa. It looks like so. That's exactly what's happening, and I understand that from their side. Here is the snap, and the extra point is up. And it's good. So 143 to go. Ottawa's on the board. It's McMinn County 43, Ottawa 6. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Hey, sports fans. This is United Primary Care, your locally owned full service medical clinic. We have some awesome news for you. We are now accepting 10 care patients at all three of our clinics. Walk in and same day appointments are now available in Madisonville, Etowah, and Athens. UPC provides all your health care needs, including x-rays, labs, diabetic management, physicals, and so much more. We're on Facebook or UnitedPrimaryCareTN.com. When you think health care, thank UPC. Did you know that All Things Exterior is your one-stop shop for energy-efficient metal roofing, vinyl siding, windows, doors, decking, gutters, and more? Basically, if it involves the exterior of your home, we can help. Hi, I'm Buffy Jones. For nearly 20 years, Micah and I have been honored to help with your construction and home improvement projects. Whether you need one sheet of metal or a hundred, we appreciate your business. We offer quick turnaround, competitive pricing, and professional installation. Come see us at 723 Congress Parkway South in Athens. All Things Exterior, your one-stop shop. 
We're back at Cherokee Stadium. A minute 43 to go in the third quarter. We're still in the mercy rule even after Ottawa has scored. It's now 43 to seven. McMahon over Ottawa. That clock will start again once this kick happens. We have uh, some younger players, I believe, out here on the kick return team. It might be a yeah, mixture of veterans and young players. Definitely and no starters. Here is, and there's a penalty marker down. I just about have to be Ottawa stepping off sides before the kick. So that's going to mark them, it is, back to the 35-yard line. While they do that, Terry, let's run down. It is homecoming, so yes, I want to make you. sure that we talk about the homecoming court. And so the freshman nominees, they were Ava Peak, Trinity Riedel, Kyrie, uh, sophomores were um, Kyra Watson and Brianna Wilkins for the guys on that side. Um, it the guys escorting them was J.C. Evans, Elijah Hacker, Kobe Cook, and Camden Crisp. Juniors, Keila Compton was uh, escorted by Christian Cooper. Taylor Sears was escorted by Jay Smith. And then the senior nominees, Lexi Cooley was escorted by Martin Castanellis. And then Tio Madrano was escorted by Israel Smith. Emma Plemons escorted by Emmanuel Sandoval. Amani Sanders escorted by Logan Wilcox. Britton uh, Ennis is escorted by Sam Bailey. And they were the princess and prince of homecoming. So they were the uh, kind of the sash and crown carriers. But the queen was Amani Sanders and the king was Emmanuel Sandoval. So congratulations to those two on winning the homecoming court and their senior year there. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you, Jerry, for uh, keeping tabs on all of that and reporting that back to us. Uh, the kickoff was returned by Kessler up to about the 34-yard line, but there was a penalty, uh, I think a blocking infraction there that's going to move it back. So McMinn's going to take over at their own 34-yard line. Luke Lawson in at quarterback. Here is the give. That's going to be the, to Marshall. Goodner. 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 And he's Goodner. going to break it to inside the 40. Inside the 30, he's going to go all the way, folks. That's going to be a 66-yard touchdown run. Marshall Goodner. And if you hear that cowbell, that's his mama Dana right there, <laughs> who is super proud of her youngest boy now out there running for the Cherokees. How, how about that speed streaking I'm down the sideline? I mean, he turned it on for sure. He saw daylight and could not be stopped. So the Cherokees answer back just like that. Wow. That that was exciting. In a, in a game that had kind of settled in to, like, you're going to finish it up, that got exciting. Yes. And, and it folks, like, that's a freshman. And he's an athlete. Yeah. He plays baseball as well. He's he's an athlete. It'll be a bright future for him. Listed at 5'11", 151. But, folks, just a freshman. And that gives you a little glimpse of what's to come for the Cherokees. That was from the 24-yard line, too. Wow. Way back there. So, after the penalty, they got backed up to the 24. To the 24, so, you're yep. right. So that, in fact, was a 76-yard touchdown run. Wow. And, I mean, the blocking there by the young line made it. He, he found a hole, got a couple of good blocks, and uh, Denny McPhail's going to be in to kick this extra point attempt. Yep, so another is, young one. Bottoms is going to be holding. And we're waiting for the officials to set the ball here, blow things into play. What a. What an exciting run there. I, I guess the referee's writing down the time of the touchdown, 21.8 remaining. Pushes the score to 49-7 to and can put it up to 50 if the point after is good. Snap is high. It's gotten down by bottoms. Kick is up, and it's good. 21 seconds to go here in the third quarter. It's McMinn County 50, Ottawa 7. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Count on Star Regional Medical Center to care for your heart. We offer a range of cardiac services close to home. From healthy heart care to emergency cardiac care and our accredited chest pain center, we're at the heart of our community's health. Star Regional Medical Center. From the routine to the unforeseen, count on us. Take our free heart health assessment online at starregional.com. Simmons Bank is proud to be part of our communities. 
I'm Shane Whalen, Regional President of our East Tennessee Market. Simmons believes that healthy, vibrant communities don't just happen on their own. They happen when people make investments in each other because we accomplish more together than we do alone. For more than 100 years, Simmons has worked hard to help make customers' dreams come true, like buying a home, starting a business, or managing money safely and securely. Visit us today. Simmons Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Back at Cherokee Stadium, 21 seconds to go in the third quarter. McMinn County leads 50-7. to seven. We just saw a 76-yard touchdown run by Marshall Goodner. We looked at it on the replay there, Jared, and what a nice cutback. It, it was. He got a, two blocks on the outside, but it was his speed through the hole that prevented a cornerback from being able to come catch him. And once he got to that second level, he was gone. So here is the kickoff. And it is by McPhail. He's going to bounce it at the 20-yard line. Going to be taken up to over the 30 to the 35, just over the 35, up to the 37. That looks like that is going to be on the return. It's Jay Home. Jay Home on the return. I think Udawa now is probably getting in some younger players themselves. Yes. That's going to do it for the third quarter with that play. So we're going to take another 60-second break. But McMinn County leads it 50-7 to seven at the end of three quarters. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Come to Osmond Flooring to take advantage of our policy of match and beat any price on any of the same flooring. We will not be undersold. Get luxury vinyl plank, carpet, sheet vinyl, or beautiful hardwood for the price of your dreams. Do it yourself or our skilled professional installers can get to most jobs within two weeks of purchase for the best rates around. You cannot buy flooring for less unless it's a lot less flooring. Worth the drive and easy to find. Osmond Flooring, Congress Parkway, South Athens, directly across the street from McMinn County High School. Companion Funeral home with Athens has served thousands of families in McMinn and surrounding counties since opening their doors in 2017. As a local, family-owned, full-service funeral home, the Cody family appreciates the trust you placed in them to guide you through the process of making both traditional burial and cremation of funeral arrangements for your loved ones. Now they can also provide an affordable, beautiful place of remembrance for your loved ones with the opening of Hawassi Memorial Gardens. Learn more at HawassiMemorialGardens.com. Companion Funeral Home, 400 South White Street, Athens. Udawa brings their team to the line. It's first down and 10. The ball spotted, uh, spotted at the 37-yard line. The runner comes to the left side. He's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage, and that is 41. They're definitely putting in some new players as well. Javante Doyle on the carry, but he's – I thought he lost a yard, but I guess they're marking him at the line of scrimmage. Cherokees have got a – a lot of new players in McCon McDermott uh, is still in there, defensive line. We've got 54 Christian Edwards into the ball game as well. Uh, cornerbacks include number 16 um, Brody Rogers, also on the far side. Bottoms will play on the other side. 24 Drake well, Frazier. Drake 24. Frazier. Yep. And let's see Malachi Nunez at the other safety position, number six. Here's a carry along the right-hand side. Picks up maybe a yard or two. Pays for it as he's tackled. Pushed That's back hard. Number 47 for Udawa, which would be Jaden McQuillan. We're going to give him the 38. So just a pickup of one. It's going to be third down and nine. Also for the Cherokees defensively on the line, Bryson Akers is out there, freshman, playing on the defensive line. 47 will be... Jack Gooden, so Chad Gooden, that's his boy. Chad's in the PA booth beside us and yep. former UT teammate of Shajan. Quarterback rolls to the right, and he's going to overthrow his receiver. So it's going to be fourth down and eight. That's going to bring up a punting situation for Uruwa. And so now I'm interested if uh, Goodner's going to get back in there and get another hey, carrier to him. Might put him back there to return this one. Smallings pass goes incomplete. It's going to be, I think, Nunez is going to go. No, Bottoms or Nunez. One of the two has got to go back yep. there. And both of them, it looks like. Udawa runs on a player late. Yep. We've got 11 out there. The return man are separating back there, covering each side of the field. It's a low snap, but he gets it away. It's an end over end. 
low kick. Probably need to get away from it, and they will. And it's going to fall inside the 30 to about the 29 after the punt. And that's where the Cherokees are going to take over. So we'll we'll see who comes out in the backfield. It's going to be Luke Lawson, I believe, at quarterback. Yep, yep. getting him some more work. We've got number 18, Walker Chenard, out there. See him running. He's going to play wide out on the far side. We've got Brody Rogers on the near side at wide out. Offensive line number 69, Matthew Bacon, is going to play center. Again, this drive starting at the McMahon County 29-yard line. Nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. It's McMahon County 50, Ottawa 7. Here is a handoff to the left side. And right up the middle, he's it's that Watson, I think, inside the yep. 40, inside the 35, still on his feet, fighting a great run. He's going to be all the way down to the 31-yard line. Lincoln Watson. And he, uh, again, another back that's that runs hard, got some speed, pretty decent size. So there's some young Cherokees coming up. They're, they're going to be the stars in the future on Friday <laughs> that night. That is exactly for sure. right. All the way to the Ottawa 31. Racking up some yardage. He's going to get the carry again straight up the middle. This offensive line is surging and pushing, and they're close to another first down. Watson looking good out there. It'll mark it. We'll call it the 20-yard line. That's going to be another first down. We'll call it a pickup of 11 for Watson. Back-to-back -back first downs. First and 10, Cherokees. From the 20. Got to think he's probably getting it again. Well. New back in there. Yep, new back in the backfield. And this one is fumbled in the backfield. Bottoms falls on it. It's going to go for a loss of yardage back to the 27-yard line. So that's a loss of seven. Samir Aguilar in there, number 30 in the backfield. Now he's going to come out. Well, he's just coming over to talk to Coach. I think he's going to go back in there. And these coaches are coaching. I mean, they're yep. bringing these young players up. And that's something that, you know, some of these young guys may not hear from Coach Cagle directly in practice. It may be one of the position coaches coaching them, but they're getting the play call from Coach Cagle. Here's a carry around the right that's side. Aguilar right there. Aguilar yep. The Another freshman. It's a lot of players getting some work out there. He is going to be down to about the 25-yard line, so a pickup of a couple. It's going to bring out third and long, third and 15. Probably most importantly might be Luke Lawson getting these snaps yes. at quarterback. Just Here is the handoff to Bottoms. To he cuts it up the left side, makes a nice cut back. He's going to be inside the 15-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down, but they might just go for it right here. You're going to mark it at the 14-yard line. So that was a pickup of 11 yards on that carry. And I believe they are going to go for it. End of the game is Winston Coffey back again, yep. number 39. Seems like Coffey and Bottoms getting most of the carries uh, when this unit comes in. Let's see. We'll see if Luke Lawson might keep this one off the read. Going to hand off the bottoms. He's got a blocker in front of him. He's going to push forward inside the 10, and I think he's going to have the first down. No need for the quarterback to keep it when you got a running back like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, this would Don't be overthink big it. for this unit to come in and put a score in. Back-to-back -back series. Yeah, I that'd mean, be big. It's, it's inside the 10. We'll call it the nine-yard line, so that was a pickup of five. The clock just keeps ticking away down to under five and a half. I think we're only going to see runs from this point. Aguilar back in at running back. We're trying to keep up with these numbers. He'll get the call right up the middle. He's got a hole. He's going to be close to the end zone. He pushes across. He's got to be in He's there. in there. <laughs> yeah. It is a touchdown. Aguilar carries the ball nine yards. He had a big hole. Nice job by that line that was in the game right there. Pushed through and scores from nine yards out. Clock down to five minutes and eight seconds. Showing a little bit of speed there, too. Yeah. He and Bottoms has got some speed, along with Coffee, kind of showing some flashes there, or uh, Watson as well. 
So four of them, four young guys, kind of looking pretty good out there. McPhail in to attempt the point after. And it is up, and it is good. So he's two for two on the night. Nice job by McPhail coming into the game. So now that's going to make it with five minutes and eight seconds to go. McMinn County, 57. Ottawa, 7. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Hello, this is Ashley with Madison Avenue Pharmacy. Here at your only independently owned Healthmark Pharmacy, we can work with you and your doctor to align all of your medications to be picked up on the same day each month, saving you trips to the pharmacy. Every month we'll have your medication ready and send you a reminder of your pickup date. If you live in the Athens city limits, we can also provide free delivery. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, 1001 West Madison Avenue, Athens. Healthmark, taking the time to listen and care. l &M Motors, your local Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealer, is a proud supporter of McMinn County Cherokee Athletics. Brothers Leon and Marvin Hammond founded l &M Motors back in 1966, and under Kevin Hammond's direction, it's still going strong at 1001 South White Street in Athens. Go see Kevin and the crew at l &M Motors for all your Chrysler Dodge Ram and Jeep needs. l &M Motors says, go drive! Back at Cherokee Stadium, five minutes and eight seconds to go. The clock has stopped right now after the score and for the point after, but it will start running again. Of course, we're well into the mercy rule now, 57 to 7. It's Terry, I know you two great interviews you've had with Terry and Chazan and Terry standing down there. I mean, they're visiting with people. Everybody's wanting to talk to them. Udawa had a coach that didn't go to the locker room at halftime because he stood here talking to Shazan during your recap <laughs> um, and was talking about it. And he knew Coach Ratledge, and so it went back yep. and forth. But another connection that was kind of cool, I got to talk to Chad Gooden while you were talking to him. And Chad played at McMinn Central. But first time Shazan kind of had a story out there, first time he took the field at Neyland, it, he was out there with uh, Chad. and They had wrestled each other a ton in high school, Shazan said. And uh, he said they just kind of looked at each other, and he said, Let's do this, homeboy. We're both from McMinn County. Let's go do it. And yeah. so that's what they did. And Chad was talking. He said, man, he was just such an athlete, hmm. such an athlete. So there you can see the Cross Creek rivalry came together and the mutual respect that players yep. have is just unreal. Uh, another good side story there, and there's, yep. a, there's a lot of them. Yeah, I'd say those two guys are in demand as they're walking through the stadium tonight. Oh, yeah. Lots of people yeah. trying to get some time from them. And, man, how nice were they to us just to give us super so nice. much time. Yeah, uh, super nice. Before the game, of course, in the pregame, and, and to come back up here at halftime. So. And Terry's, Terry's still wearing those state championship rings. So <laughs> he I don't blame him one I bit. I don't either. The the return comes to the 30-yard line from Ottawa. They're going to give it nice. to Strickland. Nice tackle in the back. Is that Christian Cook? Edwards. Yep. Edwards, Edwards, okay. Good stop there. Had him in the backfield and didn't let him go. Loss to the 28. So everybody's still playing hard. Clock running, 3.50 to go here in the game. And you know, Terry, right here, we've talked about the reserves coming in as another uh, Cherokee comes in, number 79. Uh, Jesse Jones will come in and play defensive line. But you see number five out there, Peanut Dyer, he's now going to play the defensive line. And yep. you think about what that could look like for the next couple of years, him being on that defensive front is with his speed, yep. and he's only going to get stronger. Another year in the weight room, by oh, the yeah. way, uh, in the in new and improved weight room. Yep. We got to broadcast from there for our pregame show out of the Performance Center. Uh, we mentioned earlier it's looking better and better each time we're in there. I can't wait until the weights are in there. We see the full picture yep. of everything. But we're getting there. And uh, maybe we'll be back in there for October the 27th. We're going to do another game day then uh, for the last game of the season. Boy, that's shaping up to be something. Yeah. It's Walker and it's Valley a and McMahon. Thursday night, I believe, as well. Thursday night game. I think the Walker Valley is the Thursday night game. Um, but that, I, I, I think mean, somebody told me that it was shown that shown like that on maybe Coach T or something okay. like that. So we'll have to. Yeah, we got. I know they're supposed sure to play that. at least one Thursday, but I mean, you anticipate that's going to be for a region championship or seeding some way or another. It's going to have an impact. Strickland, Here's a run wow. straight up the middle. Strickland finds some running room this time. Strickland on the carry. Brought down Goodner back out there now at the safety position yep. makes the tackle. And he's right up to the 40-yard line. There's his really, mama's cowbell again. He's really close to a first down. But it uh, doesn't look like – yeah, I guess he's on the wrong side of that line. Yeah. 
just bear I mean, you're almost right there at it, but they're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. It's fourth and inches, and the ball's sitting at the 40-yard line. When the center picked it up to snap it, it probably was a first down. <laughs> Uh, here's a run by Strickland. He's going to pick up the first down. He's going to be out to the 44-yard line. Took a hard lick there. Frazier. Yeah, right at the his legs knees. out from under. And he's going to come out of the game for a few few minutes. He's off on his own power, but he needed a break. Clock at a minute and 30 seconds to go now here in the game. So we've just got a couple of more plays, maybe three. Maybe two. Here's a snap. Probably a false start, not called. Running back going to be taken down after a short gain up to the 45 gain of one. That's McQuillan once again. He had a couple of runs of previous series. Big man coming into the game. Well, don't have his number down there. Doggone it. 63 into the game at nose yep. guard. Big fella. And the whole team was cheering him on as he ran out there, so it's yeah, always absolutely. great to see. Christian Edwards and him there in the interior line. Peanut Dyer now switching the defensive ends. Well, they were going to, and now they switch back. He and uh, Bryson Akers. And it's going to wow. be taken to Big the left hit. side, taken down hard. Gets it up to the 46, another gain of just one. And the 49 was the tackler on that one. That one's going to be Rob Patel. So Patel met him pretty hard. Almost looked like Landon Fagan's out there laying a hit yeah. on somebody. Clock down to 15 seconds. I don't know if they're going to get this off. They're going to have to hurry. That might be it, Jared. Under I 10 seconds. They're, they're, they're not going to. Well, no, maybe they are. Better snap it quick. They get the playoff, handoff to the right side, find some running room up the middle, taken down by Goodner. And that is going to do it from, for this region matchup. McMinn County will move to 2-0 and in the region, and they'll, they'll move to 4-2 and overall. And I don't know, looking at our schedule, to think that this team – is four and two after the first six games is pretty amazing, Jared. It is, and I think it goes back to the level of talent that Coach Cagle and them have made sure they tried to play outside the region. Yeah. It, it, this is not a knock on the region, but it just – when you're playing the 6A powerhouses, it's going to make you better. And when you play a team like Oak Ridge and the way you played them last week, it's going to make you play better. It didn't start out that great in the – middle way through the first half we didn't like the way it was looking just yep. tempo wise and some discipline issues but um cherokees i mean they they do what they need to uh, and pick up their second region win of the year and uh essentially assures them in the playoffs because i mean you pick up two region wins it pretty much um in, in this region the last several years it kind of assures you you will probably be in the playoffs yeah so. this, this all but assured at least a playoff berth and yep. of course obviously this team's goal is to win region four try to go back to back try yep. to go back to back I, you know we'll have to talk to our, our friend johnny kaufman who's uh been emceeing tonight a little bit and see i mean see i know we've got the records done right I mean, that's pretty impressive to do that so well, it's 50, the final score, McMinn County 57, Ottawa 7. It was McMinn County all night. And uh, so Coach Cagle right now is meeting up with his team. He's going to be up here shortly for the Southland Finance Locker Room Show. So right now, after telling you the final score again, McMinn County 57, Ottawa 7, we're going to take a two-minute break, two-minute break, and we'll keep an eye on Coach Cagle to get him up here. So don't go away. Two minute break and we'll be back to Cherokee Stadium. Athens Insurance, we're here for you. When you call, we'll be there. There's nothing that we can't do. With integrity and excellence, we will see you through. There's nothing to harbor us to handle, nothing that we can't do. At Athens Insurance, we'll be here for you. Athens Insurance, serving East Tennessee since 1931. Tennessee Wesleyan University offers more than 80 majors and minors 
at the undergraduate and graduate level. With the TWU Pledge, students may be eligible to attend tuition-free. A 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio ensures students receive individualized attention. And Tennessee Wesleyan remains one of the most affordable colleges in the region. Visit tnwesleyan.edu to learn more about on-campus and online opportunities. Choose Blue at Tennessee Wesleyan University. Hey sports fans, this is United Primary Care, your locally owned full service medical clinic. We have some awesome news for you. We are now accepting 10 care patients at all three of our clinics. Walk-in and same day appointments are now available in Madisonville, Etowah, and Athens. UPC provides all your health care needs, including x-rays, labs, diabetic management, physicals, and so much more. We're on Facebook or UnitedPrimaryCareTN.com. When you think health care, thank UPC. Plaza Electronics and Appliances, locally owned for over 32 years, has one of the largest selections of appliances, featuring brands such as Whirlpool, Maytag, Amana, and Speed Queen. They have washer and dryer pairs starting at only $11.99.95. Need new kitchen appliances? Check out Plaza Electronics and Appliances. Plaza offers free local delivery and setup, 12 months, same as cash, and they service what they sell. Visit them at their new location in the former home of Staples at 1609 Congress Parkway, South Athens, online at Plaza Electronics and Appliances. Back at Cherokee Stadium where McMinn County has defeated Ottawa 57 to 7. The highlights of the second half, of course, we had a running clock the entire time, but certainly the 76-yard touchdown run by Marshall Goodner, extra point by uh, McPhail. But uh, wow, what an exciting run. Showed some speed, cutback ability, and well, it, it makes the future look bright, doesn't it? It, it definitely does. And, of course, knowing uh, his family, I've heard a lot about it, that he's good. It's just, you know, can he kind of translate some of the skills he's had over the years from the middle school and, and younger grade level to this level. But they uh, they definitely looked impressive. And Marshall's speed right there looked impressive. Aguilar also scored in the second half with five minutes and eight seconds. He had a nine-yard touchdown run. Uh, let's see. Let's let's recount some of the other guys that were carrying the football. Lincoln Watson had a couple of nice runs. Um, we'll yeah. check his yardage out when, the, when we do the stats. Uh, who else did we have back there? Obviously Aguilar. Um, we uh, also had Aguilar. Yeah, Aguilar, Watson, and Bottoms. Uh, Winston, the kind of the main, Winston Coffee and Winston Coffee were the main ones. Some carries there as well. So uh, a lot of young Cherokees got into the game and uh, got some real really good work. Uh, game time experience here in the second half. Uh, Jared, let's go ahead and we'll run down some scores. Uh, Coach Cagle still visiting with his team. Well, they're broken up. He'll be making his way up here, but I'd say a lot of people going to have a big crowd to get him. through. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and look at yeah. some scores. Uh, up in Region 1, so the Tri-Cities area, uh, predominantly Gatlinburg Pittman beats Johnson County 49-6. to Elizabeth then 47 to nothing over Sullivan East. That was a region matchup that was key. 4 and 0. Elizabeth then handles Sullivan East. That was 4 and 1 going into that one. Science Hill beats William Blunt on the road 56 to 28 in 6A Region 1. Again, Bearden beat Farragut last night 21 to 14 at home. That was a big rivalry game. Bradley Central overcomes a 9 to nothing deficit early in the game to win at 35 to 16 over Heritage out of Georgia. They got woke up a little, didn't they? Yeah, they did. So they remain unbeaten in the number one state. Um, Anderson County blanks Carter 49 to nothing at Carter. Red Bank and Cleveland at Cleveland 51 to seven. The Red uh, Blue Raiders beat Red Bank there. So Carnes again seven to six over Fulton on the road. Maryville beats Hardin Valley forty-eight to seven on the road. Knox West beats Maryville Heritage on the road forty-eight to fourteen. Powell beats Knox Halls to give them their first loss in a big rivalry game out of Region Two, thirty-four to seventeen, on the road at Knox Halls as good well. Deal. So yeah, good deal. That's even better if you went on the road in a rivalry game. Yep. Uh, Teleco Plains is trailing thirty-five to seven at home against Bledsoe County in the fourth. Alcoa blanks Union County on the road, 55 to nothing. Marion County beats Brainerd or beating Brainerd, 30 to six on the road. Meigs County beats Chattanooga Central on the road, 34 to six. Oak Ridge and Clinton. It was a little iffy early on, but Oak Ridge winning this one late in the fourth, 34 to 24 on the road at Clinton. 
Uh, Loudon blanks Sequoia 49 to nothing. Sweetwater lost on the road at Tyner 22 to 15 after Sweetwater dropped the loss to McMinn Central last week. And then Ray, uh, Walker Valley wins at home over Ray County 42 to 12. And I don't have a score for East Hamilton and Howard yet, but we will find one at some point. All right, Coach Cagle is here. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll go right into the Southland Finance Locker Room Show. 60 second break. All right, we're going to keep it right here. We'll just go right into the Southland Finance uh, Locker Room Show with the Coach Bo Cagle. Coach, uh, congratulations on a, on a big region win tonight. Star Regional yeah, Medical definitely. Center when every minute definitely. matters. Emergencies yes. strike day or night. So we're here when you need us most, providing emergency care close to home, including the higher levels of heart care found in an accredited chest pain center. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Star Regional Medical Center. From the routine to the unforeseen, count on us. Check our average ER wait time at StarRegional.com. Come to Osmond Flooring to take advantage of our policy of match and beat any price on any of the same flooring. We will not be undersold. Get luxury vinyl plank, carpet, sheet vinyl, or beautiful hardwood for the price of your dreams. Do it yourself or our skilled professional installers can get to most jobs within two weeks of purchase for the best rates around. You cannot buy flooring for less unless it's a lot less flooring. Worth the drive and easy to find. Osmond Flooring, Congress Parkway, South Athens, directly across the street from McMinn County High School. All right, we are back at Cherokee Stadium, and we're joined by head coach Bo Cagle. Let's let's do this again, take two. Yeah, uh, a, a great win for your team tonight, fifty-seven to seven. Uh, just your initial thoughts about yeah. the game? I mean, I think we came out with fire. I think they were undermanned uh, against yeah. us, uh, which could have led. You know, it, it can still go either way if you don't play well. I thought our guys got after it and played hard, uh, got some key stops early, and scored some points early in the game, which uh, really just you know, put them down and out. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, I found out before the game, and I don't know if you guys looked at the starters <laughs> they gave that the starting quarterback and and uh, receiver uh, were suspended for the game. So I know that put them uh, yeah. b- behind the Well, I noticed the, the quarterback came out for the toss of the coin, and, and he was right. no pads. So yeah. it, obviously they were they – were, Scampering around yeah. a little bit there, to right there, what they just, wanted to do. Yeah, just down and out right before the game. You know, I was trying to figure it out. Well, let's talk about a few performances uh, anyway. Uh, Tarzan White has a big night. He scores three touchdowns and ran hard, and, and that included a seventy-three yard touchdown. Run. Yeah, you know, the good, we talked to Tarzan a lot about sticking that foot in the ground, and getting vertical, and he did it tonight. Yeah, you know, he he played better, and we and and. Uh, Actually, we watched Udwa on film from last year to kind of give us an idea of what they were going to give us on defense. And Tarzan was doing that last year, and he'd gotten away from it. And I think he's he's starting to figure it out. So hopefully, we can we can just build off this performance, and he can give us another back with another threat out of our backfield. Let's stay with offense just for a second. Peanut Dyer has a 36 mm-hmm. yard touchdown run, about as impressive a 36 yard run as you're going to see. I mean, yeah, I, think I mean, all... losing his pants halfway down there and pulling <laughs> them up. And... We didn't know that. We just thought he was getting tackled. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know. Yeah, you can see the pants falling down. I think he reached back and started pulling them up while he was running through tackles. It was it was quite humorous. That's even more it. impressive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it felt like all eleven guys on their team probably hit him. So, yeah. and he just was falling from about the fifteen yeah. and somehow managed to get. It. He's a strong kid. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what, exactly what I was going to say. He is strong, put together well, and he's hard to bring down because he's got that low center of gravity. Uh, but, I mean, I'll tell you, they works hard in the weight room, and he is strong for a sophomore. He's a big-time back squatter, and he, it was evident right there running the football. Marshall Goodner comes into the, <laughs> into the game, freshman, and pulls off a 76-yard touchdown What a run. great run. I thought in yeah. our, in our uh, you know, that second group of offensive linemen were changing the line of scrimmage. They were. And uh, I thought that was impressive by them. Uh, we didn't put a whole lot on them at halftime, but they knew they were going to play, so they were excited about playing, and I was too to see how they do it. And uh, Marshall getting sticking his foot in the ground and getting vertical, he's starting to figure it out too. So that just gives us some more depth as we go on through the season. Uh, we noticed, uh, Jared, good, good blocking to the outside, yes. but he knew exactly when to turn it up, and then – He's got some speed. Yeah, he had some speed. He turned them on out there and outran everybody and got in the end zone. The offensive line, I thought, too, it, it, it might have took them a series, but by the second yeah. series, 
they were really pushing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it's just uh, they weren't – they come in cold to the game, you know, at yeah. the third quarter. And, uh, you know, a lot of times even in a varsity game, it'll take us a, a, a series to kind of figure out what they're giving us. You know, we we had gone – that team right there goes against our defense. They don't really go against Udawa defense throughout the week. Yeah. So it takes them just a little while to figure out what they're seeing in front of them. Well, let's go ahead and switch over to defensive highlights a little bit. Uh, first of all, good – hitting good popping out yeah. there yeah and you know we played physical and that's what yeah. we ask of them every friday night uh put the guys on the ground when they run the ball uh make sure if they catch the ball they do not get any yards after catch but they did a good job of that tonight and causes some turnovers you know that was three interceptions thompson has one Sliger has one and Cam Miller has one, wanted to score. Yep. It was so dejected yeah. uh, at coming back, and he turned around after scoring, and he sees those flags yeah. on the – but still, three interceptions yeah. in the game for your team. Yeah, and it was, you know, it was a good job our defense doing that. I, I hate those penalties that we had. I don't know if you're going to talk about that much, but we got to yeah, stay – we have it. to stay disciplined. And, uh, you know – Hitting bitten behind the player right there, where there was no sense in doing yeah. that. There was a lot not sense in when they start doing stuff to us to retaliate against that because we could have lost players tonight. Luckily, we didn't lose any guy, anybody that's been playing a lot, and uh, you know it really hurt. It could really hurt us. And it's just, you know, we've got to have a team first mentality where we think about others more than ourselves, and we're still working on that. And their kids, and they're going to get that hopefully before we get out of here. Air Mullins airs it out, <laughs> a 42-yard touchdown pass to Thompson down the side. Nice little uh, pump and go. Yeah, yeah. We, we you know, uh, when you throw a screen out there early and you haven't thrown the ball at all, I'm sure that I, I, I think I said it over the headset. I said I bet we've got the screen and go already set up, and we hadn't you know really done much of it. Yeah. And, uh, I think Andrew called that thing about three plays later, and it was wide open. Nice, another nice pass to Sliger. Yep. That it, it was more than just a pass to the to mm-hmm. the running back. He, he got some distance before he caught it. Right, yeah, he had a, had a wheel route out yep. of the backfield, posting a wheel, and he hit Sliger on that. And these things we've worked on, and we're just we've got to get more comfortable doing them. We're not real successful Monday through Thursday, so we're not. You know, it's hard to just toss them out there on Friday. But a game like this, you can work on some things like that. Had a new performer out there. I want you to comment on Dandy was out there. Dandy the dog getting the kicking tees. Oh did yeah, you, what about that? I knew that would be a hit for our uh, was for, hit. for everybody. Our sideline liked it. I could hear people in the stands. That was very <laughs> cool. He come out and practice a couple of days with us this week to see if he could do it. Yeah. Told Spencer's going to have to get a smaller tee. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was mumbling that ball a little yeah. bit. The tee yeah, a little the bit. Yeah, a little bit off. big for his mouth. So. Uh, uh, we may have to work on that a little bit, but I, I bet our, our, you know our kick, kicker dog will get better too. It was a nice touch, and uh, people enjoyed it. Yeah, so yeah it's I, entertainment. You know, that's can, what we're here for. Hope we can uh, continue to do that. Well, let's stay right here and uh, bring Terry Stansel in, and he has final stats. For okay, us. I've got Udawald 110 yards rushing on 34 attempts, 36 yards in the air on six completions, 146 yards for the game. Leading rusher, of course, was J- J- Darius Strickland, 12 carries, 72 yards. Brock Smallen was 6 of 15 with three interceptions for 36 yards. For the Cherokees, 384 yards on the ground on 29 carries, averaging 13.2 as a team, 68 yards in the air on three completions, 450 yards for the game. Uh, Jacob Sharp, two carries for six yards. Taylon White, seven for 150. Brady for one carry, zero yards. Luke Slager, three for 21. Ja'Carri and Dyer, three for 21. Uh, excuse me, two for 40. Winston Coffey, two for 10. Drew Bottoms, seven for 20. Marshall Goodner, one for 76. Lincoln Watson, two for 51. And Samir Aguilar, two for 10. Y'all just wear me at. And a touchdown. <laughs> but uh, really, uh, I do have a quick question. Huh? What were the uniform infractions that they sent the two guys off with? Uh, shirt tail was hanging out. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, well, okay. You turn your attention now. You put this one behind you. You're two and zero in region. Um, four and two overall after six games with this schedule. Is, does, that is in, does that get us in the playoffs? Those two wins. I, I think I'm it all but, it, but yeah. puts you in. Yeah. I would say uh, into the playoffs. Now it'll be a matter of playing for seeding, right. obviously. Right. So you travel next week to Ray County. And yeah, I mean, it's be a, a tough game. place to play. Yeah, it, it's a tough place to play, and they're big physical guys. I got. I, I saw a film on them uh, today, 
and uh, they're huge up front, and yeah. they run the ball downhill from the I formation. So it's going to be a challenge for our defensive front. We're not built that way. You know, you just don't build defenses to stop uh, tight end, I formation, come right at you football. So it'll be a change for us to have to do that. And then uh, on defense, they're in a 3-3 three, three, three stack, 3-4, three, and they're going to bring people from everywhere. So, it's yeah. you know, it's going to be a challenge for us, and we got to prepare and get get ready uh, for another big region game. But your defensive line all year has played really yeah. well and has not backed down from some bigger offensive yeah. lines. It's, yeah. So you got to have a little just different. different. Uh, but, I mean, it, the way mo- you, you see how most teams play, like in most of our games, they they spread you out. Uh, they try to get running lanes, and they run zone. Uh Ray County don't do that. They say, here we come right at you. Stop Can us. you stop us? Yeah, and that's that's going to be a, a change for us. For you, sure. didn't, you didn't at any point slip uh, Shazan Bradley or Terry Moore into well, the game. Well, you know, I, 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 I probably would have if I needed them. Yeah, yeah, we okay. just didn't need them tonight. Maybe next so we're gonna, week. We're going to hold them back until we, till we need them. Well, congratulations on a big win. We'll let you go, Coach, okay. back to your team, and we will uh, be back with you next Friday night. All right, thank you. All right, Terry. Come on in here. We'll finish things up. A big victory for the Cherokees tonight. McMean County 57, Ottawa 7. Uh, I'm impressed with this team. We're now six games in, 4-2 yep. and two record. Uh, you, you lose to the number one team in the state in 6A and to the number eight team in 6A. Uh, this team already, and we got a lot of football to play, but already I think they're beyond expectations I agree. In, in some areas. Well, and credit, to, I think, to the coaching staff and the players yep. for putting themselves in a position because a lot of teams they could lose to Bradley and Cleveland like they did in the Cleveland game. We won't bring that up as he's still standing here talking to some other people, but um, that was a winnable game. Yep. They could have gotten down on all this, but these guys respond. They, they prepare week in and week out for the next opponent. They're ready to go, so – Kudos to the whole program for preparing. I think two things you guys have already touched base on is that I'm impressed with the defense, the way they're hitting, and, and really form tackling. Yep, I mean, they're tackling. not just arm tackling. I mean, they're wrapping up and, and really laying the leather to them. So there were some real impressed. pads popping yes, up there were, tonight for sure. Really impressed. All right, well, that's going to do it for us from Cherokee Stadium. You've been listening to the Ottawa Marching Band, by the way, during our uh, – uh, uh, closing show here. But again, the final score, McMinn County 57, Ottawa 7. We'll be back with you next week from Ray County. we got to go on the road for three games, guys. It would be nice to be home. Mm-hmm. But uh, on the road next week to Ray County, then to Chattanooga Howard. We'll take a week off, and then we'll go to Powell up in Knoxville before we return back home over a for month Walker away. Valley. Over a month away so before we're back here. That is unreal. So, so, And the Cherokee Marching Band taking the field now. I'll give them oh, a good. shout out. because deal. I think both of them are getting ready for band competitions. And, and I guess this is because of the halftime festivities with yes, homecoming. Yeah, they didn't get a chance to get out there. Short, Very good. Short. I'm glad they're giving that opportunity. And I'd be remiss, Golden Girls Dance Team got to do theirs pregame because yes. of homecoming. So they did an outstanding job as well. So all Very around, good. great night on homecoming here. All right, that'll do it from here. We'll be with you next week. Thank you for joining us for a a lot of broadcasting uh, this evening, but we appreciate you listening or watching. We'll see you next Friday.